Call the meeting to order. We uh, have a full agenda tonight, so we're just going to be sticking to the appointments that are on the agenda and won't be taking any other outside audience participation. And for everybody's knowledge, this meeting is being televised and recorded. So, Okay, so first on the agenda is our police chief okay, requesting a transfer. Yeah, what, what happened? We, we have a 2009 police car that was due to be traded in in FY 2014. It's got 115,000 miles on it. Um, it um, this fall it started developing some engine noise and just recently it developed some really bad engine noise and it can't be run the way it is. It's it, The engine is blown. Mm -hmm. We brought it over to Ipswich Ford and they, they said uh, it's, it's going to fly apart. So it can't be run and uh, it leaves us short of cruiser. Uh -huh. um, so that puts us in a position where we're trying to replace a car and um, waiting until July 1st is really putting it in the middle of August. It's a long time to go without mm -hmm. a police car. Um, we don't run four cars all the time, but we do run four cars um, some of the time and especially in emergencies. Mm -hmm. um, things like you know, well, Memorial Day Parade, um, you know, other other major events, a water main break or something like that, we're apt to have you know, four cars out. And you know, if we only have three cars, then we only have three cars out. Yeah. And what's worse than that is if, for example, last f spring, we had a police car involved in a crash, and then not too long thereafter, we had a transmission drop out of another one. So we were down to two cruises, and mm -hmm. it really it really gets a little uh, tight. So yeah. uh, I went to the board, a select one, and mm -hmm. advised them of the problem one Monday, and they we discussed several options, and they um, opted to, they took a vote to um, ask the finance committee to transfer the money out of reserve fund to purchase this car. Mm -hmm. In doing so, what we'd do is we'd zero out my FY 2014 cruiser purchase line, because mm -hmm. this would be the car that we would have bought in July, which is buying it early. Right. So whatever, the money could probably be replaced at that time, however that works. Yeah. So okay. that's, that's the sum of, and substance. Okay. Any questions, anybody? No, I'm fine with it. Makes sense. Do I have a motion that we approve <coughs> this transfer of 33900 from the reserve fund to the um, police department for the purchase of this cruiser? I make the motion. Okay. Do I have an approval? A second. A second, I mean. Janet? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? No. Okay, so the question is like, sure. um, to say 115,000 doesn't seem too too many miles to me. Is that in the normal replacement of a? 115,000? Yeah, is that, I mean, I know it's probably hard miles, but yeah, is that, you know, I mean, is, we, is it? Yeah, we, we generally, when a car hits about 85, 90,000 miles, you, you start to have problems with it. It starts to cost you more to keep it running than it does to replace it, basically. Uh, I've been doing this a lot of years, and uh, I, it's been it's been proven time and time again. Um, you spend less money on maintenance on newer cars than you do on older cars. This yeah. car is four years old, um, 2009 model year. When you think about it, in 100,000 miles, your car um, has been operated by one driver, and they get in the car and they drive someplace and they stop and they go in and they do whatever. This car gets driven by several drivers every day and they get in and out of the car probably uh, a hundred times more than you do. They turn the radio on, the headlights on, they, uh, yeah, the, it goes in the park, they use the brakes. It oh. just gets worn out just from the constant, the way it's used. And um, it's, it's unfortunately it's, it's okay. kind of a cost of doing We're business. Thank you. And then I think we'll skip 
um, agenda items three and four because it's already 7.30. And we'll go right to the next agenda item, which is um, Dave Peterson, um, Personnel Board Study. Good evening, I'm Dave Peterson, representing the Personnel Board. It's actually a three-member board. Jack Demento is, represents the Finance Committee, and obviously he's under the weather and hasn't been attending, as Bob Snow, myself, and then Deb Regan is our uh, personnel officer. And it, it basically... While you're talking, I'll take care of this. Basically, what last year at the annual town meeting or prior, actually for the last few years, I've been on the personnel board a number of years. We realized that our compensation schedule for town employees was, was really out of whack in terms of other communities, as well as the fact that within, within the town itself, the disparities between employees doing similar types of work was getting larger because we found that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. In other words, someone comes in and want, wants us to take a look at their job, we take a look at it and possibly upgrade it. But that would be for that one job only. It wouldn't include any, any other job. So we really felt that we needed to, to do a comprehensive study of the compensation schedule and the, and, and the whole way we, we work with the employee personnel plan. So at that point, we came into town meeting last year, requested a $10,000 appropriation, which we were, we were given, and we went out to bid and hired, uh, and you got a copy of HRS's study uh, there in, in your hands. And one of the reasons why we wanted to go to an outside person was the fact that, you know, let's do an independent person who has no axe to grind, and there's no, there's no feelings of favoritism or any of these kinds of things. So. She did, Sandy did the study for us, and we accepted it, and you can briefly, I don't, I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I know you're very busy, you can take a thumb through it at your leisure, but the purpose of my talking tonight is just to give you an indication of what we did and how we, how we did it, so that when you get, the purpose right now is when the budgets come in, that all the non-union personnel will be getting wage increases based on the selectman approved it Monday night. On, the, on this study and how we readjusted from the study to fit the town of Raleigh. So that when there's an increase in the budget for wages, it's a, as a result of the, the compensation schedule here that, that was created. So basically, uh, very quickly, she did a comparison of towns like Boxford, Essex, Georgetown, Grove, and Hamilton, uh, Manchester by the Sea, Merrimack, Middleton, Newbury, Rockport, Topsfield, all towns that are comparable, they're in the area generally and in comparable size and obviously no two communities are exactly alike. So if you read the numbers and it's on page five and six, you can read the comparisons. And what our goal was in, in having her do the study was to come up with a, a range, uh, uh, an average of what our people should be getting for jobs that are in similar communities. So we didn't want to be high, we didn't want to be low, we're looking, our goal was to get right in the middle. So. She basically put together a number of recommendations. And you can read through those on your own. I won't go through them at, at this point. In the end, we asked her to put at the tail end of the, well, about four pages from the rear, after page 12, and is the compensation plan, this, this, particular, this particular table here, she put together as a, as a sample of what we, we were looking for a step system the employees are really looking for a step system. And uh, she put that together. Now, we, we took a look at that and realized that 10 steps was going to be too many. We couldn't afford. Uh, and, and she's got 2.75% between steps, which for us was just un totally unaffordable. So we then reworked the schedule, which is this, this document here. This is what what Bob, Debbie, and I worked on for many, many hours, and, and Debbie's put in a yeoman, unbelievable amount of work, as well as the staff in the office here. And what we basically did was we, we cut the number of steps from 10 down to 5. We also cut the increment between, between uh, steps, one between the steps is 1 and a quarter percent rather than 2.75. And because the recommendation from the personnel study was not only that do we need to be increasing people's pay, but you also need to be able to build a COLA. 
into this in addition to these steps. So by keeping it at one point one and a quarter percent between steps, it gives the Board of Selectmen the ability to say, okay, this year we'll give a one percent call or a one and a half percent, depending on what the budget is and what the you know what the cost of living. So it, it gives us the town and, and in this particular here, the Board of Selectmen, the ability to make adjustments and uh, from year to year without getting locked into it. We'd be, they'd be locked into a one and a quarter percent, but you know that, that's fair. And after they get to step five, that's they're at the maximum. So that, uh, that that's how we, we came up with this, with this particular design. So if you look at the other chart, this, this, this one here, this, the other piece of paper we gave you, that's the old compensation schedule. And what we basically did was, the last few years, we've been hiring people at the, at the midpoint of, the, of whatever town, or whatever grade they were in. And other than the cost of living, they never progressed. So that... They never advanced. They never advanced. They never, the nobody ever quarter. advanced into the third quarter, into the maximum, no matter how many years. And it just, it just created a, a, a massive inequity. As well as, like I say, with a comparison to other towns. So, so basically, that's what we come up with, and uh, we put together. We listed all the employees, and we have really three groups of employees. We have union union employees, non-union management, and even elected officials. Now, the personnel board really only has power over the non-union employees. We don't have power over the unions. That's the selectmen do the bargaining for that. And the compensation for elected officials is determined by the taxpayers, but we've also asked that all these positions be looked at in the study so that we could, the, the selectmen and, and uh, the personnel board, et cetera, have an idea of where we fit, even with, with the union and non-union. Now, what we've done for this town meeting, and we're getting short of time, this is with, like everything else, the, the hours are ticking away here. What we've done is, when we got the selectmen to approve money night, is this, this compensation schedule applied to all the non-union employees and the, the elected officials. Mm -hmm. And it's a recommendation so that when, when you people get the budgets now from individual departments for the non-union employees, it's the, that new compensation is going to be reflected in the in increase in the wage line item. So, uh, and I'm not going to give you a copy of that because Debbie just distributed the, the new pay rates to, or she's in the process of doing it, so some of the employees may not yet know where they fit in the schedule, so obviously we don't want that to go out to the public before they get a chance to look at it. But the elected officials, we, we made some increases there, and that, that's strictly uh, in line with what other towns were doing. The union positions, which consists of the fire department, uh, the fire, the full-time fire firefighters, the, uh, the police department, the police officers, sergeants, et cetera, and the town employees union, which consists of like the highway workers, the water workers, a lot of your secretary and clerical workers, they're all, all three of those groups are in the process of bargaining. So the selectmen are able to, are using some of this data in, the, in their bargaining position, but obviously with time being the way it is, is those bargaining things aren't gonna be completed in time for, for this town meeting, but the expectation is uh, if we have a fall town meeting or whatever at that time, then, that those uh, that money would be looked at. So basically, what we ended up coming up with for non-union was about a ninety. It's going to cost the town about ninety thousand dollars to fund the non-union part of the races. And I was asked the other night by one of your members at the selectmen's meeting how many employees that the non-union was, and it, it really ends up being about a hundred people all told. But many of those people, like the library pages, work you know four or five hours a week. Uh, there's probably, I don't know, 20 or 25 that are really 30 to 40 hour full-time employees. And, and, there's, and there's a, the other thing is, is, you know, normally we come into you people and say, well, we're, we're gonna give the town the employees a one and a half percent raise or a three percent, whatever that is. That's not the case this time. Maybe there's nobody's, everybody's raise is based on the study and, and the comparability of their job to other towns and to jobs within the our town. So that some people are gonna come in and get a, that are way behind, they're gonna get a, a bigger, raise. In some cases, it's, it's a fairly large uh, raise. Other, in other cases, where the jobs were already being paid or what they should be, it's going to be relatively small. Everybody's going to get something, but it's going to be a wide variety of, 
and we're in the process of, we know we're going to get some feedback from different employees. I mean, nobody feels they make enough or why does this person make more than me? So Debbie and I have made, are making ourselves available to deal with individual cases. But in the meantime, the budgets have to be okay. So we're, they're going to go, the budget's going to go to town meeting with what we've proposed. And if there's adjustments to be made later, then, then that can be, can be done at a later time. So in a nutshell, that's where we are, you can read through the information. I'm certainly happy to come back another time. You can call me or, you know, Debbie's up, up to her ears with all the other stuff, so try to take some other pressure off of her. But it's been a lot of hours, a lot of work, and we're, we're happy with the end product, and we're now that we're in the implementation phase, and hopefully uh, it's going to be a real big help. And our recommendation is, and the recommendation of the consultant is, that we should be reviewing this about every five years so we don't get way far behind or way out of whack. And in addition, Debbie is, was able to get a grant through Mass Municipal Association to actually put together a, a complete personnel plan, update our entire personnel plan for free, basically for free on our, from our perspective. So that when we get that, we, we should have a, a real good basic plan. We need to keep it up to date. I think it's about $3,000 left in that $10,000 article, so maybe in five years would be add a couple of thousand and come back and at that time just review the pay structures mm -hmm. and any other outstanding issues. So that's and, and one important note, the data is fiscal thirteen data, so we're that's what we're using. So it hasn't <coughs> been a low cost of living has been applied to it even though we're using it in the fiscal fourteen budget. So Right and we and looking at adding you know, we're, we're setting the rates and you know if we wanted to try to look at a call it was just we can't yeah, afford we it. Can't we, afford we, it. we can't afford it. I mean at this point to get this whole thing straightened out is, like I say, non-union alone is costing ninety thousand dollars, which is a big chunk of big chunk of money. So, mm -hmm. like I say, we're going to get some, I'm sure, negative feedback mm -hmm. as we go along here. But it's you know, it's the way it is. We're sorry, we're doing the best we can. Over time, uh, we're, we're working to straighten the system out. So, if you got any questions of me, I'm more than happy to try and answer them. Did you say there will be union? Increases as well, and like, do you have yeah, the union an believe, idea? Yeah, she, the selectmen are dealing with both personnel board has nothing to do with that. The selectmen are bargaining with all three unions at this uh, point, okay. and it's, it's you know they make them in the fall or whenever the, the bargaining is completed. In terms of, but there will be additional cost over and above. This is just ninety thousand is strictly committed to the non-union employees at this point. Okay. I have a question. When you um, take the, this chart here and apply it to existing people um, is everyone starting is it based on their senior like years of service so someone who's been here for four years would automatically go to the step four or is no, everyone we, starting what, at what step what we tried four? to do was start everybody at step one we tried to put them into a more or less mo most 90 percent of the people we looked at maybe a little bit higher than that are starting at step one so what we did is we took their current rate and gave them a raise up and we put them in the appropriate grade so that they'll start at step one over the five years they'll get it at the one and a quarter. But in some cases, mm -hmm. it didn't, there were, there were uh, anomalies. And it's, in some cases, some of the employees are starting at grade two or three because of just the way the discrepancies developed over the years. Uh, but the idea was to get, to get all these people on this, on this chart so that we, we have a, a commonsensical uh, ability to look at positions. And eventually after the, you know, w five years after the implementation of this, everybody will, in, the, in that particular grade, will be making that amount of money. So we, yeah, we, we couldn't, we didn't get involved in whether you've been here 10 years or four years or six years or seven years. Most of our employees, uh, other than the transit laborers, they, most people have been here for three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. The turnover in employees is not, really not too bad, I don't no. think. And uh, so that part of the goal of the study was to try and avoid a fully turnover anyway and, and make the compensation fair. And the other question I have is, is this an automatic increase or is it based on performance? I mean, is it really a merit increase? The, the one and a quarter percent, we, we debated this back and forth and we all agree we'd like to do it based on merit. And it's ba basically, it's if you're performing satisfactory, it's very difficult to do merit raises when you have one employee working for you or two employees. We, and we also really need to, to do that. We need to get set up training and, and uh, a, a plan, which we just, at this point, we don't have time for. We don't have the ability to implement a, a, uh, 
a performance evaluation. We got a, we got a simple performance evaluation, but to do it right, <coughs> and um, you people probably are aware of issues and problems with them. And I, uh, in my career, I've, we've had a, I've been under a variety of different uh, merit rating systems, and most of them are, are awful. And, uh, and the key is to implement it right. So we, we just don't have that with the employees we have, and the, we just don't have that ability. So that's why we made the one and a quarter percent. And the idea is we've got, if you, if you do look at that chart, we're assuming that you look at this chart here. Mm -hmm. If you look, we've got, uh, we've got the grade, then we've got a new hire and after six months. So what we've done, it, most everybody here that was, was working for us now, we're assuming is performing satisfactorily. I mean, just, they've been here two, three, four, five years. They, they, they must be. <laughs> and what we're looking at here is, okay, a new hire for, say, the... The, the, the grade one would be higher than 1168. After six months, if they're performing satisfactorily, they'll get 1182. And the first step the following year will be 1197 based on their perform. That would be based on their performance because okay. in the first year, the department that has the ability to discharge somebody if they're not performing. After that, they're going to be getting the one and a quarter percent per year uh, automatic. And then any, any COLA would be over and above that. So is the policy written though, so that you can base it on performance? We, if we have we haven't. That's what we're working mm -hmm. out. That's the next step that uh, Sandy, our consultant, is working on now, is to update so that we can blend this system into and, and basically at this point it, it's going to be satisfactory performance. And we'd like to implement, like I say, the, a, a performance evaluation, but. It's going to be take time and right. Some, some no, I understand it will take time to put in the performance review system, but I was just wondering if it was written in such a way so that it, it, it goes will, into it, effect when you start. It, it will be. Uh, I'm not sure what it, what our current plan even says to be sure, but uh, at this at this point, the expectation is that you know if you're performing satisfactorily, you'll get a year from now, you'll get a, a one and a quarter percent. Okay. And then the selectmen have, the, like I say, the ability to recommend or mm -hmm. to grant more than that based on the cost of living, available funds, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, in theory, the cost of living would bump the grid up by whatever factor, so 1%, that this table would just bump up by 1%. Um, so um, if there was a reason why an employee couldn't progress through the steps on the anniversary date <clears throat> or the fiscal year, then we would... Uh, you know, there'd be an, a personnel intervention and something like that if, if there was a disciplinary issue or something. With non-union, we have a wide latitude to deal with things like that. But if it's bargaining and it employs, it's a different right. uh, course of action. Okay. That was all my questions. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so next on the agenda, we're pretty close to on schedule. The selectmen representatives and fiscal team. So I guess we'll start with you, Bob. And Bob Mary. have a copy of the FY14 budget so this sheet here is what um, Jim and will be discussing. Which sheet is that? This sheet here. So Karen, that would be yours. This is the overview one. Let me just take this. Thanks, Dave. So they, you all have that in front of you. So I'll walk you through the FY14 uh, budget. Okay. We'll start with the revenues, estimated tax taxes, twelve million four hundred and forty seven thousand seven hundred thirty dollars. Uh, estimated state aid five hundred and seventy five thousand eight hundred and ninety eight dollars. Estimated local receipts one million two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Free cash six hundred thousand dollars. Other one hundred ninety one thousand eight hundred uh, in eighty-four dollars for a grand total revenues of fifteen million sixty-five thousand five hundred twelve dollars. Next, uh, expen expenses before town meeting, state assessment negative one hundred forty-one thousand seven hundred sixty-two dollars. 
allowance for tax abatements, negative $170,000. Prior snow uh, and ice deficit, $60,000 negative. Other recap interest t uh, tax title library grant, negative $69,662 for grand total negative of $441,424. After this is subtracted from the t um, from revenues, we have a net revenue of fourteen million six hundred and twenty-four thousand eighty-eight dollars. <coughs> Moving down from that, um, with the Triton Whittier assessment, that is that takes off eight million two hundred eighty-seven thousand six hundred and ninety-nine dollars, and the Triton Whittier assessment is fifty-nine point seven six percent of the operating budget, so it's really basically 60 percent <coughs> of it goes to the, mm -hmm. to the schools. Next, uh, less fixed cost, uh, costs, retirement, med uh, Medicare, unemployment, health and liability insurance, one, uh, negative $1,253,357, debt service, negative $439,028. For a grand total of one million six hundred ninety-two thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars, <coughs> or twelve point two percent of the operating budget. After all this, we come down to a uh, balance remaining to, remaining to fund the operating budget of four million six hundred forty-four thousand four dollars, <coughs> which is twenty-eight. Point four tenths percent of the of uh, the operating budget. So that's how we run the town. Any questions? Could you ex explain these different things like estimated taxes? What's that from? What's the uh, levy? And, um, when we had the presentation at, on the February thirteenth meeting, we we broke it down the expense side of this. Um, what we do is we take last year's base taxes. We increase that by two and a half percent, and then we add new growth, and that becomes the new base of taxes. And remember, expenses, mm -hmm. you know, we're still in flux because of snow and ice versus so that, salt, and there's still bills out there. So why would there be a negative? Uh, I thought last year we had a surplus in the budget for the snow and ice. We're looking at 14, and we now have to raise money for this winter. We've had a lot of storms the last month or two. Oh, so you're including... You have to, any mm -hmm. deficit this, this year, fiscal 13, this year. has to be raised okay. right off the top next year, fiscal 14. So at this okay. point, that's forecast to be, we're in the whole 60000 Probably more okay. now. I more. don't have all the uh, bills from this weekend. Okay. So probably more, what, 130000 Possibly. Oh, wow. Possibly. Possibly. Most years we put the leftover um, reserve fund money into snow and ice, but this year I don't think there'll be a whole lot in the reserve fund, so... Um, we'll need to increase it for that vote as well. Okay. As we go forward tomorrow, expect a little snow. Monday, expect a little snow. So we're oh, no. not out of this yet. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of the present day mm -hmm. picture, but um, you know, we think we can accommodate any, you know, we, we'll be able to work this in, mm -hmm. knowing you we're, we're at the end of March. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yes. So, mm -hmm. and in the reserve fund now that you've made that transfer, has diminished, you know, somewhat. So it, usually it's the um, July 15th meet, the last meeting of the Finance Committee's fiscal year. Mm -hmm. there, would, there would be a vote of the Finance Committee transfer to the Snow and Ice Line to offset the deficit. So we realize there won't be that much coming from the FinCom. However, we're not going to be buying a cruiser in, in the fiscal 14 budget. Mm -hmm. So it washes out. Right. And the good news is spring started at 7 a.m. this morning. Mm -hmm. Yes, did it? <laughs> Summer is 93 days away. <laughs> is the 600000 in free cash, is that certified? That's Not yet certified. Final? Okay. It was supposed to be yesterday, but he couldn't make it because of the storm. So now next oh. Wednesday, I believe we'll do it. Okay. Uh, I've got a question on the state assessment, 141. Uh, meeting with the health department, uh, they have like a 53,000 assessment for mosquito control. Is that 
part of that four hundred forty one. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have me looking at the fiscal thirteen right now, but um, the mosquitoes are at about fifty four thousand dollars. Essex Aggies almost fifty thousand dollars. Another big one is MBTA at thirty eight thousand dollars, and a few other smaller ones. These come right off the top right. before we even go to town meeting. Mm -hmm. The uh, Triton and Whittier is, is that the final number for their, for them? I mm believe -hmm. it is. Yes. Yes. We do okay. put a copy of the um, no. Triton budget in your package. The budget we thought was going to be two hundred eighty-three thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. Right. And that number came down to two hundred nine thousand dollars. That was their final number, and we were asking for fifty percent of our tax levy. Right, and two and a half, and um, that that was two hundred eighteen thousand. So the schools came came in nine thousand, uh, almost ten thousand dollars under what we asked for. So their savings came from, from health insurance. So um, I, have to, I have to take my hats off, hat hat off to the Troy administration this year. They worked hard in, in this uh, school committee. Any other questions, anybody? Mm -hmm. Is that just one thing on the tax abatements? Is that just a standard figure we expect, 170000 and That's how much we budgeted every year. That's what we put in every There's year. There's been okay. um, a lot of, I don't know a lot about it, Verizon um, appellate tax cases, mm -hmm. and we've had to put extra money in for those as, as to whether or not things are taxed at personal property or not. So okay. we've been three, four years now not knowing how that's going to be resolved. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, if that money's not used, then we can use it at, a, at another um, town meeting. Mm -hmm. Year two down the road, usually. Okay. Anything else? No, mm -hmm. so. no. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Can I ask a question? I'm just sure. curious about the health insurance. Cost compared to last year, is it going up, down, or what are, what are you looking at? Um, the the selectmen. Um, no, for the town. The health insurance, the, yeah, the selectmen will be actually voting on um, the uh, fiscal 14 rates Monday evening. Uh, we expect a 3.39% increase. We just got the number this week. Right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> back to the back. I almost got away. <laughs> John and Laura will be here momentarily. Okay, um, I, I think that probably Chairman Snow can uh, kick it off. Um, he, He's really representing the Board of Selectmen and their authority to uh, review the Enterprise Fund and make a recommendation to town meeting in the warrant. So um, he's sort of exercising that authority. If it's do you like us to kick off on this? Sure. Because it's quite lengthy. Um, uh, you all have a copy. Have you gone through the copy? I'll just read the, the preamble and then, you know, line by line, you're going to ask anything as we go forward. It's, it's, it looks like this is. Um, I sent out yesterday. This was the discussion from the board of selectmen, the overview of the budget to the selectmen. Fiscal, the fiscal team, myself, uh, the selectmen, Mary, Tim Toomey, and Laura Hamilton, and, and Debbie, we met last week and we went over um, the, whole, the whole budget. Uh, this was a very good meeting. We spent several hours going over the water department budget. As I stated last week, I will only recommend a budget to the townspeople in which I know every penny is where every penny is going. Under state law, Chapter 44, Section 53F, 1 slash 2, the Board of Selectmen is responsible for recommending the Water Department's budget to the town meeting. The Board of Selectmen will only support a transparent budget to the town, the town meeting. We've broken out some of the expenses. There have been historically, uh, in, they have been historically included in the maintenance and expense line and have uh, given them uh, 
uh, their own budget lines. We also carefully reviewed every expense that is included in the maintenance and expense budget. We thoroughly examined each sub-budget in the expense to make sure there was enough data to back up those numbers. We focused on how uh, we can get the operating expense down in this department. And I can say we did. We spent five hours at that table. They went through every line and just trimmed it down. And I think we have a, a real good product and open to discussion. Who's the fiscal team? Excuse me? Who are the members of the fiscal team? Town accountant, uh, treasurer, collector, town administrator, uh, the principal assessor, and then we, um, for the water enterprise budget, <coughs> it's the superintendent and the business manager. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the chairman of the board of selectmen and the vice chairman have sat in on, uh, as, um, on the fiscal team as well for, you know, uh, executive leadership and some of the discussions. <coughs> And I think if you tuned into the, the Board of Selectmen meetings and watching, you know how I've been um, our oversight of the Water Department. And, and we've been scrutinizing everything that's that's coming through, with, uh, bills coming to the, before the Board of Selectmen. Right. So for the um, new treatment plant expenses, I see that's broken out <coughs> separately. Excuse me? It's broken out separately yes. for the maintenance. Um, is this something that, w that will be um, found out to another company to, to, to run, outsourced? Or is it, are we going to do that in-house, in or is that decided yet, or what's... They're still discussing. Still under discussion. Option. Okay. We, we put a number in there to cover mm. the event that we did need to bring a staff in for the three months or four months we'll be operating the uh, plant. It's slated to operate open, I think, in uh, about a year from now or maybe in, in uh, April next year. So okay. there'll be a time that we have to man that plant. We're not sure what our staffing needs would be uh, for that period, but we'll We'll know more as the year goes on. Okay. We wanted uh, the this form four will kind of leave, you know, it's still in draft form, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be back uh, before the FinCom, mm -hmm. I'm sure, at a, at least one or more meetings. But uh, the team really focused on bringing out, um, making more budget lines so that they're not just one large line. Uh, so we worked uh, diligently to try to present a budget that would be some be transparent so on the wages and salary section we we thought it would be uh, wise to show the townspeople basically the base wages mm -hmm. and the overtime so these are these are the bargaining unit employees we're talking mm -hmm. about um, which forms get presented to the so town form one will be what appears in the warrant the okay. detail sheets are, are behind it there is actually though um, form two will will sh be shown in the town meeting warrant. It's a line by line vote. And form three, then everything after that is the detail sheets okay. to uh, provide the supporting information behind the numbers. Um, and then the expenses. So that in line seven and eight uh, w was broken out to show. Um, uh, consulting engineering work. We don't have in-house civil engineering yet. You know we're operating utilities and and doing other things. And, and some you know they need to have the ability to be advised by civil engineers on various mm -hmm. projects. Uh, so we have a maintenance line, which is the expenses for for the operation, excluding the four months of the new treatment plant. And then we we broke up what are anticipated costs for the new treatment plant, lines 9 and 10. Um, the fiscal team met with the town's auditors um, and, and uh, got a lot of good feedback on uh, presenting an enterprise fund budget and how it should be organized. And there was a strong recommendation 
that we have um, in the budget, and it is in the Department of Revenue's recommendations, the capital plan program that's in the budget. So it's just a continuous um, article that we run every year as part of the capital improvement program because they do have to address, um, you know, the needs to upgrade water mains, and then I know that the representatives are here from the water department, but John and Laura, they can get into that hydrant replacement programs and things like that, and it should be funded on an annual basis. Um, and the, the other uh, important note in this budget plan is line 12, emergency operation and maintenance reserve. So this is similar to a finance committee reserve fund that, that you have for the general fund. Uh, under, um, under the enterprise law, um, you can have um, this budget line. So this would be a reserve fund. So should any uh, unforeseen and emergency expense operating under what, what the general fund reserve fund is, comes up, the proposed um, plan to use this would be uh, the superintendent would make a request to the water board. The water board would review that. If they agree that it met that requirements, they would refer it to the board of selectmen for review. And we had this discussion with the auditor, and he said because um, Chapter 44 really says it's the Board of Selectmen's responsibility to uh, refer this to town meeting and oversee this budget, he, he said just, just keep it to the selectmen as the board that would approve anything, any transfer from that budget line out. And line 13 shows a stabilization fund, uh, also a recommendation from the auditors as well as to create a stabilization fund for the water department. Uh, right now the town has a stabilization, it's a rainy day fund, there is nothing for the water department, there's awfully you know, millions of dollars worth of uh, equipment and technology and, and everything else. Um, this would be something that would be built up over time, could be used to offset rate increases for things that you know needed to be replaced or higher costs or, or to address some substantial purchase and need to change something. So that would actually be in the form of an article. We're working with town council on that. The state law does allow special permits, special purpose stabilization funds. And, it, and that includes enterprise funds. Um, so that's kind of how we're looking at presenting something to town meeting. Something this form or fashion, it's still in draft form. So the, the main incivility didn't go down. It just got broken up, broken down in detail, though. It didn't, it didn't go down on the, because uh, the uh, note on here says that you work to form decrease the at form five. Um, no, it's looking at the note on the, no, you the note on the, the first page seven. says you carefully review every expense that's included, and we focus on how to get the operating expenses down in this department. I think if you but, uh, turn to form five. We're not sure draft one. Excuse me? We brought this down from draft one to draft, draft one. two. Draft two. Mm -hmm. So if you look at draft two, you can see that we, we broke that out in 38 lines. And you can see FY13 uh, and FY14. Mm -hmm. The fiscal team uh, focused on a lot of these, um, the 38 lines here, um, you know, to try to get behind uh, how these lines are utilized, um, adding lines, changing lines, um, trying to make sure there was a clear um, purpose behind each of these sub budget lines, which um, mm -hmm. Laura Hamilton will be maintaining and monitoring um, in general. And this is once again, it's, it's a total number, but it does kind of um, allow, uh, if, what, what the Board of Selectmen is concerned is about having control, have, make sure there are proper controls in, um, with, between the budget and then what is actually expended during the course of the fiscal year. And so we'll be able to set up a system where, you know, we'll be monitoring ex expenses and, and also um, during the meeting, uh, Laura had discussed they've already been implementing some efficiency measures on different things uh, that she's been working on the past couple of months to try to streamline costs, reduce costs, find cheaper ways to do things. She's been working on purchasing through consortiums and things like that to save money. So, I'd like to impress upon everyone, all the townspeople, 
that we are work, working with the water department, the board of selectmen, and the fiscal team. There is strong oversight from the board of selectmen on this water budget, and so that everyone knows in town understands that we are scrutinizing. We scrutinized every line and went through this budget. And we spent we were diligent in our duty going forward, mm -hmm. and as we go forward, we'll continue. So on Form 5, Draft 2, is fiscal year 14 is um, now separated into the Central Street facility versus the treatment plant, so that the, the total of those two columns combined is really what the expenditure will be for 14? No, um, no, if you go back to Form 1, you'll see that we do have a separate section for that. Um, it was We just wanted to represent the breakdown on Form 1, we have a section that, that really earmarks the new treatment plan expenses. The 63.8 is represented mm -hmm. in the third column on Form 5. So there's obviously similar costs to run the new treatment plan as the general administration, the operation of three uh, pumping station, three wells, and water mains and connections and things like that, uh, technology that's needed there. Mm -hmm. Form 5. I think we would add those two columns, the one that says the regular meeting and the treatment. Okay. Columns are added together. So comparing that back to fiscal year 13, the um, expenses have stayed no. the same. No. What you're saying, um, this is two of these two. Four of the budget. Oh, four nine. I was just trying to compare it back to uh, 13. Oh, okay. Well, that also includes the three months of the mm -hmm. treatment plan. The new treatment plan is yeah. added in there, right. so mm -hmm. that's additional cost. No, no, on, on the budget, on the article, though, we're going to have a separate section. How does Appendix A, the five year capital plan, how does that tie to the budget? Or is that it's, something? Um, on the table there, and I'll have uh, Laura Hamilton address that. Um, the the appropriation for the capital. Okay. So you still want to? Okay, so what we did is um, we looked at a five-year capital plan, um, and we are going to replace four hydrants a year for a total of 15,000, two gate valves for 12. Um, we're going to clean well, too. <coughs> And the storage tank um, is a five-year cleaning. Every five years <coughs> under state law, we have to go and clean it. Um, so if you add up the 15, the 12, the 15, and 8, that adds up to line, the 50,000 on line, form one, line 11. And we, as the Board of Water Commissioners, um, agreed to hold on all replacement vehicles uh, for FY14. We're not going to um, replace any vehicles. So we are, it's still on the plan, but it's a hold there. You see hold in the column? Yeah, okay. Um, so we're not going to do any vehicle replacement in FY14. And each year, um, we're just going to go through this and, you know, shift things around. This is kind of a plan. And um, we talked a little bit tonight at our board meeting about vehicles and putting them back on the plan for future years. Mm -hmm. um, so that's things that you'll see this form and we'll rotate things around. Um, but this was our idea for capital mm -hmm. planning. Mm -hmm. Where does the capital planning figure uh, show up in in your budget? So line on form one, line eleven, 
that's the fifty thousand, but like the loader Those are a and day. air compressor. So it's at only the bottom, the um, Larry, at the bottom, we were going to have at the end. You see, it says capital capital articles on form one. We would have added mm -hmm. the the vehicles there, um, but we decided to not replace any vehicles in FY fourteen. So the other years that you don't say indicate hold and it's not X'd, what does that mean? That when you're not sure if they're going to go on or not, you know, because right. it's not, so that's what it is here. It's in limbo right now, you know, these other replacements that are on here, but they say there's an article next to them, but they're not. <coughs> okay, so what, what the Water Department clearly heard in the last year was that for any one-time capital, um, asset or replacement, we're going to have an article on town, on the town warrant. Um, but like the hydrants and cleaning the wells, mm -hmm. those are capital improvements, but they're, re, you know, we're going to be redoing those on an ongoing basis. It's not like we're going to replace a whole hydrant, it's going to be parts of cer certain hydrants. Mm -hmm. Um, when we do our hydrant flushing, we make a list of the hydrants that we know we had trouble opening and, you know, parts are broken and those are things that we're going to be looking at. Um, we're replacing the hydrant on the town common. You can see our flags are out there now. We're going to move it off the road and move it back. But we're actually taking the hydrant <coughs> that's there, but we're going to move it into the, the actual common. It's kind of on the street right now, if you look at that hydrant. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the gate valves um, that we are doing, that we are going to replace is on the common. And the other gate valve is 133 and Route 1A. That's going to be the other gate valve that we're going to do this year. And all the gate valves from Ipswich line all the way up to Newbury on Route 1A are going to be 100% replaced after these two gate valves. So we're looking at gate valve replacement on different streets, you know, going after the big ones first, Weathersfield, we have a lot of breaks, Bradford Street, we have a whole list of how we're going to do the gate valves. Um, but like a truck, it's a brand new truck with, with hydrants and gate valves, it's pieces. They're, they have a capital improvement program, and the auditor um, discussed this um, yeah. when we were at our meeting and, and said, you know, that's that's what, what Laura is describing is part of a capital improvement program. It can't all be done at once. It's part, phased in over time, uh, and it constantly needs to be, um, you know, monitored, and, and it's part of a long-term, long-range plan. I know we have five years here, I believe. But so <coughs> capital improvement programs and things like that, and the Board of Selectmen, um, you know, was clear that, you know, a new truck or something like that for right now, just to try to get things um, calmed down and quieted down and fo refocused and to redo this budget, it probably would not be a good idea to put on any uh, vehicles, but in the future that would be an article. Um, you know, it could be folded into, a, you know, a capital equipment borrowing article or just purchased out of available funds through their free cash or some other method. But for this fiscal year, the selectman was just focused on a transparent budget uh, that truly addressed the needs of the water department. And and um, and that's where, why the Board of Selectmen is so involved at this point. Mm. But the trucks and, and the, are the front end loader, if those are a separate article, and we'll say that's mm -hmm. 150000 that goes back into their budget? No, that would be, um, it would be, as I understand it, they would, if they needed a, a loader and they got their free cash certified, and uh, so they had available funds over and above what was approved in their operating budget, they would have an article on town meeting to do that. And I believe, for example, last um, special town meeting, they had the article for the 40000 um, to uh, co complete the garage, uh, Renovation, and that was how they used that forty thousand was out of that. Is that correct? Right. Right. So they, once they have that notification from the state Department of Revenue that they have those funds, then they would think if they need something, they would put an article on the warrant. But okay. this year, the selectmen will be reviewing all articles and things like that put on by the water board. 
Just, John, how many gate valves are there in, in, in town? 680. 680. 680, so mm -hmm. it's a large task at hand. So is it constant? I mean, as soon as you finish the last, the 680th, do you go back to one? Uh, well, it's a I don't know, how function long of last? years. Really. How long did they last? Uh, well, it depends on who made them. Uh, like anything you buy, there's good products and bad products. And if you buy inexpensive products in the beginning, which I think some of these were, uh, they don't really last that long. So we had a lot of trouble with the, uh, <coughs> the shafts and the, the nuts fall off the top of them. And they, they no longer seem to operate with jam. So, uh, uh, 50 years, 60 years is a good okay. lifespan. All right. Uh, you know, if you chip away a little bit at a time, uh, um, I won't name the town, but one mm -hmm. town that I worked for, mm -hmm. we had an assessment done of our water system, I think it was in the 80s, and uh, they estimated it cost $30 million to bring it up to uh, current day standards. Mm -hmm. So if you chip away, but that was built in 1891, but if you chip away a little bit each year, that number doesn't become so big. Right. Um, I don't know if you remember the, uh, I think Boston did an assessment like that at one time, and uh, they just gave it up. <laughs> Too much to handle. Yeah. So how do, um, how does the total budget, I mean, obviously it, it then determines or drives the rates mm -hmm. for um, the coming year. How do these, how does this budget and its rates compare to what was presented last year in town meeting for pro projected rates? Well, it would have to defer to, to Laura, John, on that because I wasn't involved last year, but I know there is a rate report in there. She could probably explain the increase on that. May I speak for a moment? I'm not sure if the last time we were here, um, we knew that the water treatment plant was being permanently financed. Did we discuss that last time, or is this news to you? We, uh, we, I think when we were here, we just spoke about general fund. So this is the first oh, okay, discussion so on the water. We received notification from the MWPAT that the water treatment plant would be permanently um, financed this spring. So what that means is that they, you know, have a number of projects that they've bundled together and they've decided, okay, this is, you know, an appropriate time for us to go to the market. So our water treatment plant is being permanently financed this spring. So if you look at the, um, at the debt schedule, you'll see that there is, uh, you know, roughly $691,000 in total debt related to the water treatment plant. That's a part of this budget. And I think that's an important thing. Before you talk about rates, you have to realize that that, you know, is happening this year. So the table form two, you, this will be in the warrant. So everybody can see that. And that's, Karen was here to kind of discuss the impact of um, that first loan payment is significant to the water mm -hmm. rate. Now that first loan payment that you talk about, or that's in uh, Bob Snow's letter, that first payment is eight hundred and ten thousand. Roughly, it roughly. actually um, went down about nine thousand dollars because they had originally thought they would close on their financing in March or April, but it's actually going to be the end of May. So mm -hmm. the first interest payment is less than we had originally um, thought. But basically, we'll be making mm -hmm. two principal, I'm sorry, two interest payments and a principal payment in fiscal year 14 for the water treatment plant. Is that what this 713,134 is? Uh, Again, that's in Bob Snow's letter, page three. Talks about the principal interest loan organization and administrative right, right. fees. What, what happens is when you borrow from the state revolving fund, you also will be pay, will also be paying um, a percentage of the issuance costs 
Right. So there's a loan origination fee. Of, I thought that was the eighty-five thousand. Right. There's a loan origination fee of fifty-four thousand nine eighty-five, and there's also an administration fee uh, that gets paid with each interest payments of 0.15 percent, and that calculates out for the first year to be eight thousand two forty-seven seventy-five on each of the interest payments. And then also there is um, going to be a charge for bond council to review the offering of about twelve five. So that's where that extra eighty-five thousand comes from. Okay. So while it's not part of the principal and interest, it is associated directly with that borrowing. But where does this seven hundred thirteen one thirty-four? Where where does that show up? It shows up. You're not going to see it all in one place because what you'll see is on form one. Is there um, cost of debt, debt issuance in 15, the $85,000? And then okay. above that, the 810 is the debt cost of all the water department's debt. But if you look on form two, on line 16 and 17, you can see the principal and interest payments for the water treatment plant, the 440, 440 principal, mm -hmm. and the 183, 283 interest payments. Right. So if you add those numbers together, that's where the 700,000 comes from. That was in Bob's. Okay. okay. To plus the other loan, the million three. Can the million three is actually on line 14 and 15. But that's still treatment plant, so those numbers really should be combined. Right. Because we're talking about a $12.3 million barn. You're correct. I agree. Maybe I should drop those together, Karen, on, yep. on here. Drop, you know, drop mm -hmm. that one. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I agree. So we have the total borrowing cost for the treatment plan. So when we went to we were a town meeting last year, what was the <coughs> borrowing projected to start? If it started, you say it's starting in May, when? We're, you know, we're kind of at the mercy of the MWPAT. Um, you know, I called them and I said, well, this isn't finished. And they said, well, you know what, it's projected to be finished within the next year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're kind enough to give you this money at 2% and, you know, here you go. Your time start, your 20 years starts now. But when we put together, I guess what I question is, when we put together the what was presented to town meeting and it had projected rates, was any <coughs> principal or interest for the plant calculated in that? Well, what had and happened then, last year was when we approved it at town meeting, mm -hmm. we then went through um, some interim financing with mm -hmm. the MWPAT. So what's been happening is on a monthly basis, Laura submits the bills to um, the state revolving fund and then they reimburse us um, as a drawdown on this interim loan. So that's how it's been working and we've had the, um, we've not had to actually pay anything at, with the um, idea that when, you know, they told us that we'd be permanently financed um, then we would have those numbers in there. I think if you look, I think we had to make some estimates last year um, on whether anything would happen um, with regard to making interest and principal payments. But, you know, we've been doing this interim loan drawdown up until now. You know, we had kind of hoped that we would get a little bit, you know, farther along in the project before we would have to start making the principal and interest payments. But like I said, we're you know, basically at, you know, their timetable. Okay. It, what I'm trying to understand is what were the rates presented at town meeting last year and how they compare to this budget and the rates that will be... Well, it was 2%. That was what... The water rates. Yeah. I'm, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, water rate, not oh, interest sorry. rate. That's not my interest rate. Okay. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I don't, I, yeah. I don't know for sh what was projected to be well cost for interest and principal, how much of that was factored in the rate, because that would have an impact, but I'm trying to understand what the rates were projected and what they are looking to be like for this year, yeah, that based be, on this budget. We did budget for the um, origination fee in fiscal 13. Right, right, but but she, what she's asking is how much of the water rates were factored into this, and that's, 
No, well, I mean, wh what, what was presented at town meeting for projected water rates for 2014 and however far out it went, and what is the actual rate going to be for 2014 based on this budget? You remember what the rate was last year? The projected rate? Yeah. I thought it was 14. Some, somewhere around 14, I believe. I thought it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. have it and then what do we project? The portion, the portion of that going toward oh. the plan. Didn't Western Samson help us with that? Or? I'm not sure of already. So I think, um, are you talking about the presentation that we did? Is that what you're talking about? At I thought at town meeting that there was <coughs> information about what projected rates were, similar to what you have here based on tiers of usage. Right. Um, so I'm just trying to understand. So we weren't projecting that I remember. Um, for the 12.3 when we presented the mm -hmm. article, we were not anticipating a debt payment in FY14. That's right. It was going to be um, another interim loan and then permanently borrowed, um, we were hoping, for FY16. That's right. So that's my understanding of that. Um, we, so that was never calculated in any of anything that I did for rates, uh, John. Yeah. Because we weren't anticipating this debt. It was, you know, Karen, you know, Karen has to do what the market is telling her to do. Right. So um, the other thing here is, um, and Karen, you can help me, is we're permanently borrowing right now $12.3 million before the treatment plan is completed. You know, every day we're building a treatment plan. And we're hoping to bring the treatment plant under budget. And I know it's, I shouldn't be saying that, but, um, you know, we already cut out the loader. So I know there's things in the 12.3 in the that we probably are not going to purchase. So we're watching the change orders and we're working with the selectmen on the change orders and presenting those as we go along. Karen, explain. So, in two years from now, we've we're done with the treatment plan. Um, it's going to be February 14th was our target date. We probably still will have bills that will be submitted um, by my vendors through the state revolving fund. I'm giving a two or three months lag time. You know, we completed the project. We're going to have a check sheet, make sure everything that we ordered is what's there, and they're still going to be submitting bills to me and I will submit them to the State Revolving Fund. Once the, all the bills are in and we total up what the actual treatment plan cost us, if it comes in less than $12.3 million, the market will... The, the State Revolving um, Fund will, will adjust our debt schedule. So in FY16, we can actually see the debt goes down because we didn't use all the money that we permanently borrowed right now. We kind of, you know, we're ahead of the game. This is an unusual situation. It's, you know, the state revolving fund is allowed to permanently borrow two years, um, and I believe that to be true, Karen, um, prior to a project being completed. Right. If so this is, this, is this is normal business for them. Right. But then they, once the project is completed, we will get an adjusted debt schedule, and we're hoping, and I think everybody in the water department is, is working really hard too to make sure that we live within our means we can cut where we can cut and the treatment plan is on the radar I mean we're looking at the treatment plan every day we saved you know what John eighty three thousand dollars in the river crossing so you know we're looking at this all the time um, so we're hoping and I, I still am very optimistic that it's going to come in less than 12.3 I'm pretty optimistic, but, you know, any unforeseen emergencies out there. Um, so I think, Karen, you'll be working with us probably through 15 into 16 to get the debt down. Right. It uh, has to do with um, the tax-exempt nature of the bonds. There's a waiting period, and then they look at it and say, okay, you know, we 
you borrowed 12.3 originally, you didn't need it all. Um, and then, like I said, they'll adjust the schedule. So you're going to see our rates maybe go up and then come, you know, it's going to be kind of a curve. I think FY15 is going to be another big year for the water department um, in the rates because we'll be operating the treatment plan for 12 months versus four. This budget that you're looking at tonight is a four-year, I mean a four-month treatment plant operation. In FY15, you're going to see that treatment plant number go up because we're going to be operating for 12 months. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of projected out the budget for, until the year 20, 2020 right now. <laughs> so I kind of looking at increases and looking at, you know, what's going to go on um, in the water department. So it's going to be a difficult year for us, too, next year. So in 2015, it'll be a big spike then. Because we'll have the treatment plan out for 12 months. Yeah, for there'll be a big score. spike from, yeah. it's going to be like, you know, um, well, it's two and a half times that, you know, whatever the debt is, you know, so it's going well, to be. Well, the debt might come down in FY15. That's something we don't, I don't know when the state revolving fund will make an adjustment to mm. our billing, you know, to what the actual treatment cost, the treatment plan cost. There's still a lot of unknowns for us in the treatment plant world. What's the term on the loan? Mm. Is it 20 years? 20 years, yeah. And unfortunately, we tried to go for 30, but they, they wouldn't allow it. So, um, unfortunately. There's a lot of variables. But one of the things that's going to come up is that we're going to get more customers. There's a few projects going on in town. So we'll be getting more um, money in for that. Um, and then, you know, the, like the debt could come down with, you know, uh, the actual amount of, you know, borrowing. So it, there's some variables there. It's a dynamic thing to, to figure out at any one particular time. Can I ask a question? I, I think I'm trying to get to the same point you are, is what are your, what's your projected revenue versus the, the rates to, to create the revenue to fund this budget. I mean, what, in other words, you, you had a budget for FY13, you've got a much larger budget for FY14 based on the treatment plan alone uh, coming in. Have you done an estimation of what the water rates are gonna be to, to give you the funding needed to, to pay for all this compared to what you had in 2013? So, yes, I guess. I guess. Do you have our draft rate? That's it right here. Is that, is that on in the uh, draft two, the last last, last, okay. last page? So, Dave, yeah, basically, six. we're looking at usage. Um, you know, the monthly billing has been very good for us for um, for our customers to realize um, quicker when you know they're irrigating the lawn or. This week we had a customer with a water break. She got back from Florida, and sure enough, she, she has a water break. Um, so the monthly billing has helped the residents look at their usage. And um, basically, we're pumping 11 million gallons a month. Um, I don't see that going up with the new customer base yet, Tim, um, because they're not hooked up. You know, so in FY14, I don't know how those houses are going to come online, um, but our customers are still 1,779 customers. We're pumping 11.3 million gallons a month, and that's how we set our rates. Um, and we look into the tier structure, and we set the... Um, the rates a little higher for the tiers. So if you, it's not a straight 36% or 40%. But we try to, you know, the lower tier is typically our, you know, seniors or um, single family um, tier, and they they pay a little less in one, you know, percentage. Every single tier. From zero to four thousand gallons, pay a less rate. The usual rate across the board, tier two would just pay a higher rate. We always look at everybody in town and treat everybody the same. 
Everybody gets the first 4,000 gallons for $15.75, which breaks out to be two cents a gallon. These rates are per thousand gallons usage. So, um, and we talked a little bit about, you know, the multipliers and stuff within the water department. So, um, yeah, 1575 looks high. It is high. I will agree. What are we paying now? 1125. So it's a 40% increase. Our debt alone, Dave, this year is 83%. So, you know, the selectmen and the fiscal team and everybody worked hard on bringing our budget in at 36% overall, but the debt alone was 83%. So this is a very, very tight budget. And like Debbie said, I'll be watching it uh, very carefully. And as I, you know, see issues come up, I'll be presenting those to the Board of Water Commissioners and they'll present them to the Board of Selectmen, and we're going to have to go to that reserve account if we need it. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult, as John has said over the years, to look out 18 months from now and know what's going to happen in our business of running the Water Department. Um, we have unforeseen emergencies every day. We're right now in the middle of one. Um, so it's difficult. It's a difficult, you know, business to run, and we're supporting this budget, I believe, Tim, and, you know, we're going to work really hard with everybody, but the debt alone is 83% increase over last year, so um, <coughs> I'll have to watch it. The, the rates are based on an estimated total usage based on, was it last year or the year so before? So what I, yeah, here Tim, so what I have here in front of me um, is we look at every household, right here, I have every household in town, their water usage for the last five years, so I can look at your house, and I look at usage, um, I won't name names, but okay, let's just look at somebody here on Haverhill Street. Um, now this is a single family house. And in 2009, they used 227,000 gallons of water, mm. which is a lot. Um, in 2012, they used 234,861. So when I set the rates and look at usage, I'm taking averages of averages. Um, some households will go up higher. Some houses are conserving better because of the monthly billing. Um, but I'm looking at everybody in town all the time. And then we're looking at, by billing, um, the number of bills, um, the actual usage by monthly billing. And I have from 1988 to today. So we look from semi-annual bills to quarterly bills to monthly bills and looking at people's usage and behavior in the water world. Um, I think what really I noticed, John, and you can probably help me here, is that we're detecting leaks a lot quicker. Um, we had a, a resident on Central Street, you know, they, the lines were frozen um, a few months, you know, a few weeks ago, and his bill was $3,000. It was just leaking out in his barn. Um, he didn't know it. So um, those are things that are hard, but... You know, we pumped the water and he had to pay the water. So that's how it works. Um, but, you know, we're also, you know, having to work with um, the garden club. I don't know if you noticed. Look at it. They're doing a, a water conservation on April 2nd at the library. And, you know, talk about outside usage, um, irrigation systems. When those, you know, the gardens start, we can see it. You know, we see people, you know, and those are painful bills, um, but that's people's mm -hmm. personal choice, you know, to, you know, fill their pool or, you know, we see our water usage go up when the pool's open. Uh, we had another resident whose pool was leaking, you know, so they found that out. They were filling it with the tap every, every day, you know, topping off their, their swimming pool 
Meanwhile, every night it was leaking out the bottom. So, you know, these are things that are helping the residents too. Um, so that's kind of like when we look at the tier system, we're kind of focusing in on everybody in town and looking at each tier and what people's, you know, usage is. And I'm really kind of trying to look out past one year versus the other year. Um, I'm kind of looking at the five-year plan here and using that as our usage. And okay. anybody's welcome to look at this history. Um, have you estimated a rate for um, 2015 based on the fact that there will be a... I did, but there's still some conversation in the water department if we're going to be a private-public partnership for the treatment plant. We still have a lot of work to do in FY15. We still have to decide about what our, our organization is. Um, are we going to sub out some of the work? Um, there's been a lot of conversations, I guess, if anybody's been watching us on TV. Um, we've been talking a lot about what the Raleigh Water Department's going to look like once the treatment plan opens. We've had some private companies come in and start giving us presentations. Um, the cost, really, they haven't really targeted in on the cost. Um, they kind of kind of gave us an overview of what they, the services they can provide versus having our operators operate the treatment plant. And this year, I thought it was really good, Debbie, when we did the um, breakout of the overtime mm -hmm. on the wages. That also includes our standby. I'm going to add standby there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're 24 hours, seven day a week operation. And we have a pager. The employees are carrying their pages. They're called out. They get a four-hour minimum on the weekend and a three-hour minimum on the weeknight. So um, that's a number I think we're going to be watching. And if we have a private company, we don't. We might not have that. So you know, if we go to split shifts, we talked about that too. Um, going to split shifts with the treatment plant. Um, and John, you can help me here. You know, during the summer, we might be running the treatment plant 24 hours, depending on our residents' needs. But in the winter, we rest the treatment plant. We might only be running it one shift. One shift. So we're going to be looking at shifts and staffing. You know, we've talked some about some of this. Um, we've been a little distracted, but we're going to get back to it. Um, so when FY15 rolls around, there's a lot of good ideas out there. I don't know what it's going to do with the rates, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, I've looked at rates out for the year 20. Uh, I have them here. But you don't want to know that yet. Um, one of my sheets here. No, um, we don't want to pay it. <laughs> yeah, well, Nobody does. I think, I think everybody appreciates us sometime. You know, the water does provide a service to our residents. Um, you know, it's, it's tough. We've, we've gone through some growing pains in the water department. Um, the treatment plant is a good thing, and it costs money. That's all. What else can I say? Um, in one of my sheets here I have, I, I did look at it from the year 20, up to 2020 here. Um, so, not prepared to say that right okay. now. Um, not. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a minimum water bill, do you? You know, we, t we used to, Larry. We used to have the $18 water bill. I don't know if anybody, you know, but... What I, I found most um, of our minimum are our seniors living alone. And those, when I look at my whole town, I, I know exactly who they are. And they're running about $10, $11 a month. So if I say there was a minimum bill, that's pretty much what it would cost a single person. Well, um, I, I just know that you know, one of our friends came back from wherever and you know like her water bill over the two month period was nine cents right and i've so, seen that too uh yeah it costs you more to produce the bill then <laughs> right well we don't actually right. so well, she didn't pay it but then yeah 
I don't know what the penalty and interest was. Payment of nine cents, probably fifty dollars. No, you know, we but, don't actually. There is but, in the program, as she did that, so Glinch. Um, we don't charge interest anything under a dollar. You know, we right. don't put demand charges on that. Obviously, um, we don't mail anything under a dollar. It costs us what forty, fifty cents to mail, and the bill's a dollar. Um, I work with those. The though that population of our residents I know who they are they typically will give me a check for you know ten dollars and that will cover them for six months you know um, so things like that I'm mm -hmm. kind of getting a handle on um, who they are and reaching out and working with them so that they don't they want to pay the nine cents to me I say don't bother but they say right. I have to pay it <laughs> so um, we appreciate that mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would hate to charge eighteen dollars to somebody like that, though. You know, so that's why I think when was the decision to get rid of the minimum bill, John? You were there, right? Yeah. Um, a number of years ago. Hmm. A number of years ago, I believe. Because we would have charged her eighteen dollars for that nine cent bill. So right. That, now we're just charging by the actual mm -hmm. usage. Um, right. Well, the state. I noticed that in your, uh, when you're coming up with the rates and everything, you have a estimated discount, uh, which is typically 5% of, right. of that. But then on your uncollected, uh, well, for one thing, uh, I, I think I know what you're doing, but in a, mathematically, you know, you're probably juggling the numbers. It seems like you would have the uncollected before the the discount because it looks like over here that you're giving a discount to the uncollected okay funds. so that's a very good but. observation Larry thank you um, so the way the system and the water work you have to assume everybody takes a discount everybody takes the five right. percent you but have I, I would think the uncollected would also be kind of a that's an actual number Larry Okay, okay, so what happened when we went monthly billing, we were quarterly. So our quarterly billing um, would have been um, May. So we had the whole month of June to collect that. So our uncollectibles in the quarterly billing was less. I think it was around 32,000. That's a real number that I can tell you by month that number's pretty strong. Um, that's an actual number on a monthly billing that doesn't pay us within the discount period or the 30 days. So June 30th, the water department has to put in that uncollectible number into the formula for free cash and all the other stuff that we do. We have to budget that number in because I do think you'd collect the prior years. Um, receivable the joint receivable. So it may wash out one year to the next? It depends because now we're reading the, the last ones. So you always collect all the money. Eventually. Eventually we do. So we can talk about that. I personally have gone back and forth with that, Larry. It's a number that unfortunately in the formula of accounting kind of hurts the water department. Um, but you're right. So you can almost go from your free cash somehow, so we could budget that in over a two-year period or something. Because we can't use the money until the following certification of free cash. I so think in a year you might not collect the June one, but you probably collect in July 12 months early. You probably collect but we wouldn't get that certified out. until the following, like two years out. But you also collect it. But all, but just never write off that kind of money. Well, no, I mean, we do do liens. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. This, you know, we're watching uncollect. I watch uncollectible. Right. Um, you know, we send the shut off notices um, starting April 15th. I got the list on my desk right now of potential shut offs. Uh, we can shut off from April to October. After October, we're starting to look at who we're going to put a lien on um, their property. And the liens would go on. Um, the Board of Water Commissioners said anybody with $500 or more would be liened. Um, 
So the liens go on um, in December. We usually collect the liens. Right. But there's still another group of people that I can't shut off and I can't lien that I'm working on payment plans and I'm sending out letters and um, I think we can probably look at that in the future but that number is pretty real from one year to the next right. um, you know I wish it was lower but that's in a scheme of two million dollar you know it's a pretty solid mm -hmm. it's usually the same people from year to year so I um, don't want to get into that right now right but um, have you noticed any decrease in the number of accounts, like people going out and digging their own wells? Okay, so um, we noticed some of that, to be honest with you. Um, the price of digging a well is around 7000 as everybody knows. Um, I think, John, i probably seen, we keep a well list, so you know. I mm -hmm. have 460 wells in town. Um, that are potential water hookups, so that's what we're looking for new customers. Because some people, wells dry out and they want town water. <coughs> um, I saw in the last year three new wells. Um, I think there was one on Kittery. I can tell you where they are. Um, they were mostly irrigation wells. Um, so that's kind of what we saw. I didn't see a, a rush of wells coming in, basically, but, um, you know, we do keep a track, and I have a list in my office of every well in town, um, and when the new wells, they go through the Board of Health, they're regulated okay. through the Board of Health, not the Water Department, so, um, I'm sure Frank over in the Board of Health has, you know, all the new wells in town, too. Um, Well, how come? I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt. I, are you? I, I'm done. You done? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I was just wondering why you don't. I was just following back what you mentioned before. You didn't know what the uh, from after 2014. You don't know what the you know debt schedule is going to be like. But don't they? Oh, don't have you the have a schedule, schedule throughout the next yeah. 20 years? We have the debt schedule, Peter. What we don't have is how we're going to our organization. What is, what is the town of Raleigh employees organization and the impact of that? Um, and how much is it really going to cost us to run the treatment plant? Um, I don't know. What, what does the organization have to do with the, the staff? The, the debt actual schedule. staff. But what so does that have to do with the, the debt? I don't oh, the debt. I'm sorry. The debt I'm talking about the debt. The, debt's not, the debt is pretty... Um, we have the debt, Karen. You probably have that. I didn't right. bring the whole debt schedule. With so me. what what is it going to be? Because I asked the question. Oh, it's around six hundred thousand a year. Yeah. I know okay. Oh, yeah, six hundred thousand. It's not going down yeah. anytime okay. soon. Um, over twenty years, of course, we're going to be paying. You know, but it's it's pretty. So you do have a schedule that oh, you yeah. know what's going to be yeah. for every year for the next twenty. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Peter. Yeah. The only thing that would change the debt schedule would be if they did not spend the entire $12 million in building the plant. Mm -hmm. Then there would be an adjustment. But, you know, oh, it, it's still it. $12 million. I found it. Here's the year 2020. So I have a little chart, and I brought, okay. broke out, um, you know, the wages, our maintenance, chemical, vehicle, over, you know, I broke out our debt. Um, indirect cost and capital um, improvement, and I'm looking at rates out. Because that's about seventy percent of a of the whole budget is going to be eighty three percent. Eighty three percent of the budget is, so you can, is debt. There's, you know. That's a real number. Um, so I think you know everybody in this group over here agrees that we're going to work really hard on keeping our cost in, in line. Um, so we, we're not buying vehicles. Uh, you know, we're, we went really long and hard at that fiscal team meeting for five hours and, you know, I think it was a good meeting. It was productive. Um, we're looking at procurement. Like Debbie said, the chemicals. Um, I joined the group now. 
and we're actually going out to bid, I believe, this week. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to start trying to get more people, you know, to look at other rooms and look at water breaks and maybe procure that together mm -hmm. um, as an outside source so that we can get a better price on dirt and parts that we need during a water break. Um, so I'll be working on that. We're looking at our fuel costs right now. We're going to go out to new procurement on our, our vehicle fuel. Um, we're looking at our supplies. I mean, this, you know, staples and, you know, paper and, and things like that. Um, working really hard at trying to go through vendor by vendor in the water department and seeing, you know, how we procured it and can we save any money anywhere. Um, we're doing a vehicle policy right now. We're, we're logging in every day where our vehicles are the maintenance on our vehicles. The main line on vehicles is extremely high. Our, our trucks are 15 or 23 years old, and, you know, we do have one new truck, but, you know, the meter truck, is truck four, has 175,000 miles on it. And that truck we need. Um, so, you know, we'll be looking at that in way 15, I hope. Uh, at least one new vehicle. Um, since you're on the subject of the trucks, I, I did have one question on your uh, Form 5, the 31 and 32 line items for fuel and maintenance of the vehicles. You went from like uh, 38,000 down to 25,000 and 34,000 down to 20,000 on the fuel and maintenance. So. Uh, what we did, Larry, is. Um, and this is another area too, like if we have a private company plant, they might bring in their rules. Um, there's been some talk. But I thought they were going to use your vehicles. Well, depending on what we negotiate with them. Okay. Um, so, and this is very complicated, you know, we can take, I talk a little bit about these private companies. Um, there's all different kind of packages. Every single private, cap, um, private company wants a capital grant for the Raleigh Water Department. They want to know that the Raleigh Water Department is going to maintain the treatment plant, look for upgrades and things like that. If we don't do that, they're going to build that into their rates and charge us so that they build a capital plan for us if they're responsible for maintenance of, let's say, the membranes. They're, right. going to, they're going to charge us back at their overhead costs. Right. So I'm looking at where can we save money? We should have our own plan and not build in any extra 30% markup or whatever their markup is um, on certain parts. Right, but this is just on the, fu the fuel and the well, maintenance the fuel, of, of, of the vehicles. So the fuel, Larry, is we, we are now setting a vehicle policy, um, sort of like what the uh, police do. We, we drive a lot of miles around town, so every day now I'm watching. No vehicle is going to go out of Raleigh without us knowing, either John or I. Um, we go over to Gloucester, we have to deliver our samples. We went there Monday. We got to drive to Gloucester, we got to drive back. Tomorrow, John and I are going to go off to Wilmington. Our vehicles will go out and come back. We're going to know every day where our vehicles are, and we're going to try to not. Um, I don't know. There's some perception that we drive around and, you know, I, I don't know that. I haven't seen any misbehavior like that. Um, basically, we do well rounds every day. The truck went out today. We had a water break. We had to go shut off, turn on the Grange. Um, I had a final reading. Um, you know, the guy, you know, truck nine was out all day today. So. I'm watching where they're logging in, where they're going, and we're looking at the miles. That it right, takes but I, you feel comfortable with those numbers? The, you it's know, that, tight, that's, Larry. I have to tell you, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with it as long as we can control it. And if that would be an area I could see the Board of Water Commissioners coming to the selectmen and saying, you know, we, you know, a truck broke down, or you know, we use more gas than we thought we were going to. I, I don't know. Yeah, we, we worked actually, um, and Bob Snow um, was the one that sort of did a lot of extrapolation on, um, based on his career experience working for Verizon and driving all over New England. 
Um, we we looked at that number f and compared it to the prior to fiscal 13 and, and said geez that does look high we know that the police department runs 24 7 and they spend about 32 33,000 a year for vehicle fuel so we worked as a group um, getting that number down to 25,000 and uh, Bob I don't know if you want to explain a little of the methodology on that but um, we felt confident that, that that number was something that the water department could live with. We'll monitor it, certainly, mm -hmm. but uh, that it was something for in being in town, you know, for predominantly the vehicles are in town unless they're mm -hmm. doing testing. Well, I mean, as long as you feel confident with it. And, and we took, and I'm, I'm going to take some figures off the top of my head for what I pulled up the other day, and I figured there was 6,000 gallons of gasoline, and I just went through it. And try to figure out, you know, the average pr uh, price of a gallon of gasoline, and try to come up and what with the, what was the usage. I think I need to a little background before we even got to the table to sit here and talk about things. There were subgroups, okay, before the the fiscal team met. When we got to the table. Were, the talk was quite frank and to the point. Okay, there was no. You know, we didn't shook up anything. It's kind of like watching such made. It's an ugly process, okay? But the end result, it tastes good, and that's what we try to do. It got ugly at the table, believe me. But we got to the point and drove the point home. You know, there's, there's a problem. We're going to take a look at the you know, vehicle mileage, the gas usage, and everything else. And uh, <coughs> again, it was straightforward and to the point, frank. And uh, I think what we came away from the table, I think what we give you tonight is um, you're getting, uh, what would you say, Tim? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sugarcoating this, am I? No, you're not. <coughs> no. Uh, there, there was a lot of work done. Yes. Everybody sharpened their pencils. Everybody looked at everything in detail. Uh, we had Laura that was at things, and uh, the team came up with other things. And, we, you know, fine-tuned it and massaged it. And we got it down, believe me. And, and, and like Laura says, it is going to be a tight budget. And um, it's, it's, you know, there was a lot of work done on this, this, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it, ten years ago, it might have been, you know, a little bit of a different thing where they just took figures and kind of bumped them up to meet the cost of expenses increases and stuff like that, but we actually went into it and uh, there was some fighting going on, but we, we controlled ourselves and we got, we got it done. Yeah, yeah, and again, before we got to the table, we spent a lot of time before we even got to the table. But the five hours that we spent at the table, I think, were very productive. Yeah. And I think we come out like we come out with a, a good product here. And it, it, it's going to continue. This is not you know, mm -hmm. something that's going to be just put on the shelf. We were going to continue to work together. Yeah. So legal costs went way down too. What was the reason for that? Is it? So we moved the legal costs. Um, in FY13, we had the treatment plant in the legal costs. So the legal costs that you look at now is, um, you know, typical legal costs for the water department is working on easements. Um, That's the five thousand yeah. dollar figure. Yeah. Okay. You know, we might have some employee issues, or you know, just little things that we might have that come up that we need legal contracts, contracts or things with engineering. Um, so what was included before? So all our debt closing costs, um, First oh. Southwest, all the bond council, that all got moved over to Form Two. Oh. So Cost when of Karen debt told you the debt, eighty-five. Okay. Some of that money was already, I think it was around 40000 we had built in there for closing costs for the interim loans, and uh, Jackie had given us a number mm -hmm. over the years. Um, mm -hmm. So we just, this legal cost is just standard business, and we do, we do need legal advice, Peter, in the Water Department from mm -hmm. time to time, and this is the line we would go to. Um, we'll watch that one, too. Maybe that one will come down. Um, I don't know. Um, I thought it was really great. I, you know, I look at this all, all day long, so I, you know, get tired of it. But, um, you know, breaking it out to 38 lines now, 
is really a good way for me to start looking at um, who the vendors are, what are we putting in those categories. We all agree that supplies are really supplies. Um, what we might call supplies in the water department, somebody might call something else. So I think you're going to see this this group of 38 items maybe change a little bit or get longer or, um, you know, maybe define some more things along the, um, along the way. You know, the, we combine the uh, Comcast, phone, Verizon. That's why, Larry, that one went, went up. Right. That was a combination of other lines. We just kind of made, um, you know, all of those items that look the same into one line. Um, and everybody knows Nextel. Um, there's a lot of changes in the Nextel world. Um, so we'll be looking into our phone systems and things like that. A new line for us is the SCADA line, uh, line six. And you're going to, you know, I told the Board of Water Commissioners, and we're going to be talking a lot about SCADA and what that means to the Water Department. Is that software or manpower, or exactly what is that SCADA? So SCADA is a combination of... Um, it's a system. Yeah, a computer system. Um, and on John and I's desk... Separate from line 11? Right. From yes. line okay. 11 is the IT computers, but the skater is actually all our alarm system, all our pumping. Um, okay. Pretty much runs the plant. It pretty much runs the plant. It runs right? the plant, it, it monitors the plant, it tells us what's okay. functioning, what's it, needs, not functioning. it needs to be secure, it can't be bundled with it. something that right. can be hacked into or accessed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a lot about that. More automation with it. It's yeah, okay. it's a cost savings to us because it's more automation than right. Next year, you're going to see an FCC licensing for the water department. Um, that's why that line is in there right now with no money. I'm anticipating um, part of the treatment plant in the RFP. We have one year worth of licensing. The following year, we'll have to pay for our license. Um, so as I started thinking about the treatment plan and some of the new things, I added that in there. Um, the two-way radio system, which I think is working really great for the uh, um, the water department. We went back to the radios and the trucks, and we're communicating with the light department and the highway and the you know over the radios again. Um, it seems to be really you know working well for us. Um, Dig Safe is a new line. We spend a lot of energy on Dig Safe. Every time a mailbox is put in in town, anywhere, we go out and do our Dig Safe. Um, we pay for that. You don't. The residents don't pay, but the water department has to pay. So um, that's a new line that was built into our um, indirect cost at some point. But. Um, we do a lot of dig saves. This week alone, we did 42 dig saves. Um, so when our trucks are around town, we're out doing dig saves. Um, another area that I'm logging every day on the vehicle policy. Um, Laura, can you explain the dig safe? A lot of people can understand that. <coughs> so basically, you're a resident, and you're putting in a fence at your house. And I hope you're calling dig safe. Um, so DigSafe actually emails the water department that at your house you're doing whatever project. Um, and they'll tell us location. They don't tell you our name. They tell you what we're doing. And we go out, and actually you'll see us flagging <coughs> where the water main is. And I'm sure the light department is going out and flagging the electric lines. Um, and every day at the end of the day, they give us a good night so we know there's no more dig safes. Uh, we have a water break. We have to call dig safe out. Um, and dig safe has to come out and check for gas and you know all the utilities that are in the ground before we can start digging. So sometimes you see us waiting. We're waiting for dig safe to tell us that we can start digging. Um, we're pretty on the high list of dig safe so we have a water break they usually respond within minutes um, they have their dig safe crew out there helping us 
Um, a little, I'll just give some background what Dig Safe is. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It is a. It is a. Uh, it's put together by all the utilities. Okay. <laughs> and as you, you know, around town, you've probably seen blue paint or blue markers. You see yellow, which is for gas. You see uh, like a uh, a pink, which is a tele company. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, electric is. What is it? The future for yeah. No, it's a. Uh, um, it's water is blue. Water is blue, but you see all these different colors painted in the street. Anytime you're going to excavate on your property, you have to call Dig Safe. Dig Safe, which is one eight hundred Dig Safe. I'm, I just want everybody to know this because mm -hmm. if you don't and you hit a line, you're responsible for that line. It can cost a lot. Of money. So, egg on even private property. Call one eight hundred Dig Safe. Let Dig safe, no. They give you a number, and then from there, um, they'll notify the, the water department, the electric, and they'll come out, and everybody will mark their uh, their property. Okay, so you know where the lines are. And, and again, let me emphasize, you don't want to hit an electric line, <laughs> okay, or a gas line. It can be very dangerous. Gas is so yellow, so you yeah. gas is <laughs> gas is yellow. Um, pink is uh, water. You can cut it. Or orange, <laughs> orange is <laughs> orange is communication. Uh, pink is uh, a pink, or uh, that color is electric. electric. So, okay. The but contractors call and dig safe. So yeah. before they mm -hmm. dig, mm -hmm. uh, we the, we we pay a uh, fee because we're a part of dig safe. Don't we? Right. Every, well, the utilities yeah. pay. Every utility pays. pays. Every yeah, the sure utilities the pay. The pay contractors right. don't pay. Uh, they they call in to get a right. dig safe number. They mm -hmm. dig. After the utilities go out and mark these things, and it's a safety thing. It's mm -hmm. everything's safe. Yeah. So depending, you know, we have a lot of development in town. So I see Dig Safe is, you know, we're going to be busy with Dig Safe. Um, you know, we can go through all the different alarm, you know, the different things. I don't know if you have any other questions here. Um, uh, yeah, I do. Like ahead, line Mary. line eleven. Okay. Uh, the IT computer licenses. Okay. That's an that's an actual figure there. Yeah. So what I started to be honest, that number might go up a little bit. I hate to say it. Um, this is an area um, with a treatment plant and skater. Every single iPhone pager computer for every single thing has to have its own license. I have 50 licensing alone for different things in the treatment plant. I'm just starting to get my arms around that. Most of those licensing for the treatment plant in FY14 is covered under the uh, RFP. Um, Microsoft Word, X, you know, all, all our computer, um, everything has a license. Mm -hmm. Our mapping has a license. We have our own My Maps too. So if we go have a water break at your house in the truck, it pulls up the maps that has a license. Uh, we don't come back to the shop and go through our files anymore and look up your mm -hmm. address and see where your water line is. We have that all computerized now. That has a license. Um, so I started making a list of all our licensing um, by computer, by different programs. Um, the Neptune software that we run for the billing software all has a license. License for the truck, license for the computers, you know, all of your meter heads, that's all licensing because um, it's Neptune software. Okay. So um, that went up, you know, we're kind of level funding <coughs> that. Um, but I, I really, Larry, will have to. Mm. That's an. That's one of the areas I'm really going to. It just seemed high compared to like the the IT of the whole town. I know. A and no, of I, the I can see. Plant, because of the treatment right. plant, Larry. Um, and for the first time, as you all know, last year you supported us, and we now have our own server. Uh, we're connected, like you know, this building and um, the annex. We used to be all on flash drives, and you know we kind of made a network. Um, so that cost some money to run a server. Um, that also has in there, um, you know, our support for uh, PRS. Our um, in that number, I believe, is like eight or nine thousand dollars for our IT support. Um, 
we're still growing and developing electronic job sheets so that you know you do have a uh, a final reading it's all computerized now and inventory is taken out of a job sheet and we're, we're jobbing out the truck and the employees electronically that has a license um, I'm trying to reduce some paper in my office if anybody happens to walk in there lately um, you can see the amount of paper that goes on in the water department um, it's huge everything has uh -huh. paper backup right now um, so that number I definitely <coughs> will be able to communicate to the fiscal team and to you um, a clear definition of where the licensing are what we're what our computer needs are and but it's a couple of months away right um, do you have other questions uh, yes uh, the water break materials uh, I know. is that that would seem like it would be like on hand type of a thing. Our inventory you, is but, pretty low, Larry. Uh, if you look at the water department's inventory to compare to other water departments, um, we don't stock a lot of items. We have a water break. Um, we're usually calling in for parts. Okay. Um, a typical water break could cost us $40,000. Um, it's these, some of the parts are $6,500 alone. Um, and John, you probably could go through all those parts. Um, well, some, I mean, not all of it's ones. hardware either. Some of it's rubber materials mm. that they have filled in this uh, hot top patching and uh, repair work that goes on. You know, oh, okay. After the actual project's fixed, mm -hmm. so it, it's not all just metal hardware. Right. And John, that's all like on, on a state highway, like yeah. 133, you have to put mobile, movable flow in. Right. And, and um, all these things Very to expensive. add up. Hot top, um, yeah. uh, heat treatment. I, I used to do this in, for Verizon engineering, cutting up the streets and putting conduit in. So I know that, mm -hmm. that part of the business, yeah, yeah. it does get expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. as, soon as, you, as soon as you cut into the road, cha-ching. Right. Yeah. You're spending money. Another question I had on the the filter for the new uh, plant. Uh, the last that I heard, it went from like a hundred thousand dollars, and it had to be replaced every two or three years to five hundred thousand, and so replaced every now. seven years. The pole membrane, it's a membrane system. There's two of them. There's two poles in there. And every seven years. How much does it cost? In today's price, it's a half a million dollars each. Okay. So, you know, when we set up the stabilization fund, um, I could see that would be an area that. Because I, I don't see that cost anywhere. No. no. So we never, ever. In there. Um, this is something that we really need the stabilization fund for, a rainy day account. And John, you can help me too. What we're going to try to do is not run... Um, but your, your stabilization accounts and, and the other account is like 100000 right? Right the now 50, it's 50000 right 50, The membranes okay, are not the, in there, Larry. But why and wouldn't you capitalize that anyway? And the... Might let you capitalize. So we never. This is a new behavior for the water department, Peter. Yeah. It's, this is really new behavior for us. Um, since I've been there a year and a half, this is something I really feel strongly about. Um, what? To to plan for for things mm -hmm. like this. There has been nothing in mm. anything I could find in the right. water department for any repair and replacement. John, you've been talking about that from the day I started. Um, but where does the 72K fit into your Right now it's not budget? in there, Larry. We're hoping to set up the stabilization account with okay. town meeting. And if there's any free cash, um, I see us saving our money. Going, I'm a saver. I like to plan. 
either to reduce the rates or to figure out next year in FY15, you're going to start seeing a repair and replacement for the treatment plant and how we're going to use the stabilization mm -hmm. account for that. Um, if we had to budget that into our rates, I started looking at that, budgeting into our rates, repair and replacement, and that's part of my my plan here. Right. <coughs> it's new thinking for everybody, mm. and I, it would increase your rates. I mean, that's yes. the reality of that. Um, Is this a sole source? Yes, so you're right. It's a, and they're out of Albany, New York. Um, the membrane technology, my understanding, is getting better. Um, and the way that we could run our treatment, and that's why cleaning the filters in place, and I'm going to be going to a treatment plant. I, I was hoping to do it this week, mm -hmm. but I didn't get there. Um, the more maintenance we can do on a regular basis to keep our filters running, to keep our, um, our holding tanks clean, it costs us a little money as we go along each year, but it's going to preserve the membranes. So mm -hmm. what I've heard from other towns is one membrane, you know, might be seven years, the other one they might get 11 mm -hmm. years out of it. Because we're not going to be running both membranes all day long. Mm -hmm. So we'll rest a membrane like we do rest our wells. And this is something John will be mm -hmm. working with his staff if we do split shift. We're going to be looking at how hard one particular membrane might be working against the other and switching mm -hmm. them like we do now. We rest wells, we start up another well, we shut one down. Mm -hmm. We're doing that for a reason and we'll be doing that with the membranes um, so that the life of the membrane will be longer. So we don't want both membranes to fail on the same day. Right. We'll be really in trouble. We always have well two to go to. But Are there other municipalities that use this same uh, membrane? It's really breaking technology. Um, and right now, I know of two towns, um, Gardner and Littleton. Littleton's actually membrane system's been about, I want to say 10 years now. But the new membranes that they're putting in are our technology. Um, and I know some surrounding towns from us that are on a sand system now are going to starting to look at membrane systems. Um, they cost more to build, mm -hmm. but they're cheaper to run, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that yet because we haven't started ours. But right now it sounds like Raleigh is we're, the only we're, one We're a role model, Larry. People are looking at what Raleigh's doing, and I'm really proud, to be honest with you, mm. that we're kind of on the forefront of this technology, and we're going to see other towns following what we're doing. Um, these sand membranes can't work and filter out the contaminations that are in the water. And that's the reality of it. Right. These membranes are doing a lot of work um, all day long, cleaning your water. And um, the military using the same technology. I think they are. Yeah. I think yeah. like you know. Um, like desalinization. Yeah. yeah. For desalinization. They can, t they can do, they have these portable water units they can, they can pull up mm -hmm. and they can do 1,500 gallons uh, uh, an hour. So, I mean, take the, the brackish water and just uh, turn it over with these membranes. It's incredible mm -hmm. what they can do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we're, we'll have to watch it, Larry, and see really, you know, how we, you know, keep up with the treatment plant once it's up and running. Okay. Uh, I've got still s some more questions. On, on Form 1, the total salary and wages, mm -hmm. 492738. Uh, I'm wondering if that should be the same as on Form 4, 492706, or am I okay, so missing something? So what we did there, Larry, is we broke out the wages and overtime. So line three and five, uh, four, oh, actually one, two, three, and four add up to four and four. Okay, so those two totals should be the same. Yeah, okay. they are. Yeah. Um. 
Okay. And that number you're going to see change a little bit. Um, we, we um, this is still a draft. Um, right. And, and we'll be working on the implementation as Mr. Peterson described earlier in the meeting for the non-union position. So I haven't um, been able to to make those changes with Laurie yet on lines one and two. Uh, additionally, right. um, we um, we need to update draft two form four. There's a note there. I'll be working with Laura just to uh, update. There's been some staffing changes there. Okay. So <clears throat> what I was going to explain to the FinCon is uh, I would suggest that we have another meeting with the Water Board. They still have to revise this to get it back to the selectmen. Um, <clears throat> and I can certainly get, if it's called draft three at that point or even draft four, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, get it to the finance committee <coughs> for another meeting. Um, what is the longevity? It's a un uh, collective bargaining. Oh, okay. Um, so that's just yeah, well, there is a provision in for non-union employees in the personnel plan, and then also okay. for, it's based on years of service and five-year increments. There's uh, a dollar amount given on the anniversary date. Oh, okay. Higher. And then back to Form 1, the engineering operating labor, 30000 that's your uh, water treatment plant uh, engineering that you're... Uh, paying for and there's additional engineering that um, we're going to um, we know about the lead and copper um, we're going to be changing our uh, lead and copper testing we have to test uh, 40 sites in town and we'll be working with our engineers on uh, the lead and copper um, testing that we need to do that's one area. Um, there is a little more engineering at Well 3 that is not part of the treatment plan that I already anticipating. Um, so we'll need some engineering over there. Um, services. And we have, but this is a new area. It's been in your indirect cost, and this is an area that I think the fiscal team wanted to see up front. Every water department typically will have some engineering. I see this number going down next year, I hope. Um, but right now, those we got two big engineering projects for the water department that need to be done. Um, and so this is right there every, you know, we'll be moving that number up and down every year um, based on what our needs are. Right. It's typically, you know, a couple of five thousand, sort of like your legal cost. Okay. You have to anticipate some engineering. Um, we don't have in-house engineering. No. If you went to uh, a city, usually the DPW director is a you know licensed professional right. engineer. So uh, the water department and occasionally highway and planning have to use consulting engineers. And certainly um, this was an expense that we wanted right out <coughs> in Form 1, which will be on Article 6 of the town meeting warrant so that the townspeople can actually see you know, what that is. Possibly. Any other questions? Yeah, let me see. Or anybody else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I guess uh, okay. Bob Mary, you you raised your hand earlier and I wasn't totally ignoring you, but did you have something to ask well, or add? I don't think we at least I don't think we answered the rate issue, the great question that you asked. Well, my question is going to be, uh, what determines what that rate becomes? What is it based on? We have three different classes of customers there. We have the low uses customer, which is 4K. And then we have the middle customer, and then we have what would probably be considered the commercial customer. Mm -hmm. with the 36 day. So my question would be, what determines the rate that that's set for each one of those customers? Okay, so the way we look at rates in the water department, um, we look at many factors, Bob. Mm -hmm. um, and when we went from semi-annual billing 
to quarterly billing to monthly billing, the tier structure stayed the same. So that's kind of the way we started this. Um, is just looking at usage within the different tiers. Mm -hmm. That's strictly what this is all about right here. Um, you know, I've looked at rates and we've had some conversations with the Water Board about different ways to do rates. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into rates, um, but this is strictly a usage rate structure that you're looking at here. And that's been the history of the Water Department. Um, when I look back 20 years um, to 19, whatever year I just looked at, it's a, it's a usage. And this, if you looked at these 0 to 4,000, was just a third of what the quarterly rate structure was in that usage. So that's how that works um, on this chart. But this is an area that I, I'd like to start talking about in the next five years <laughs> and sort of looking at how other towns are setting rates and um, how the wa mass waterworks, you know, ideas about setting rates. And I think, Karen, you had a question in one of the fiscal team meetings to have a rate for the treatment plant. You right. Know, would right. we have what? a split rate? Um, we heard tonight a minimum bill. Um, I would like to see, you know, the thousand gallon unit go in line with most other water departments. We have um, our multiplier is extremely high um, for a monthly billing. It worked. The thousand gallons worked when we were quarterly and semi, but it really doesn't work in a monthly billing. Um, so when you look at Ipswich, for example, they their rates for, per month is on 100 gallons. We're on 1,000. So when you look at Ipswich on the chart, they're paying $4. And it's cubic feet versus gallons. So, you know, we're still in gallons, but cubic feet, you're, you're paying, you're getting less for your money, basically, than in gallon world. Um, so. I'd like to start really having maybe a subcommittee and getting people more involved with setting rates and maybe making a presentation, you know, to our selectmen and kind of talking about rates and how, what I would like to see added into the rates. Um, but that's just, you know, I haven't talked to my board about that yet, too. Um, so, um, you know, I think that this is a whole area that it would be great to have a subcommittee and to really honestly get a finance committee and the fiscal team and some residents involved and start looking at how the rate structure is set. And if we want to do a split rate, do we want a seasonal rate? Do we want to do a summer winter rate? Um, you know, we can start looking at other ways. I think I could I could add to this, Laura. I, I think what we do is we we look at what we estimate to be the total flowage that we you know based on history and what we expect to have uh, for a production of water, and then we look at our total budget and, and we try to simplify it. But a lot of it is based on a lot of estimates and real numbers and projected numbers. And and, and then what she does is she goes through the spreadsheet, Bob. She uh, can can vary things to look at the rates and how the how it impacts the rates and the the variables involved are uh, of course that the lower tier which is the most number of accounts a lot of people do practice conservation in the town and uh, so there's a lower rate for that we many years ago said that you know that because there's a lot of elderly in there we have a lower rate we want to keep that as low as we can. And not impact uh, our whole uh, big um, budget. So uh, there's a lot of um, uh, going back and forth with Laura's efforts here to come up with these rates, and that hasn't changed. We, I think, we've been doing that right along. So uh, she came up and did this, and uh, she came up with those rates looking at all the numbers. I'm curious, as far as usage, you know, what 
The projection that you came up with versus actual, what was the difference? These are this this usage in tears I feel very comfortable with. Yeah. You've been I, pretty I much on the hear, money with that? Yeah, five five point six million in that first tier is really five plus one plus another ninety. And I can look at that. Oh, that's what I was trying to explain. When I look at the five year usage, um, I can look at there's in my software package in my billing, I can actually see the tiers and the usage and the accounts. Um, actually, we're getting better right here. Like I look at this one here is um, I can look at five years worth of history. Mm -hmm. And I can look at farms. I can look at the dentist in town. I can look at the gas stations. I can look at the municipal buildings. Um, I look at medical buildings, mobile homes, nurseries, public housing. So I look, a lot at, of data. I, I look at all of these things and kind of, you know, I know where my, and I know there's 63 commercial accounts. Mm -hmm. But not all our commercial accounts are using a lot of water. Then I look at my top 10 big users, and I know who they are. Um, so then I start looking at their usage. Do you see a trend though that might go down if the price goes up? Actually, you know, yeah. and I think that's what, Karen, you were getting at with the wells and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, we saw some slide in the usage, um, but when I look at you know, we pumped 154 million gallons this year. We pumped 148 last. We pumped more in the monthly billing than we did last year, but the same amount of people and a couple of people going on wells. So, you know, then I start looking at how many people put in swimming pools and they use town water, which I find amazing because I know exactly who they are because when I do monthly billing, when we're reading, I get a high-low report. Before I send out a bill, it's flagged everybody's whose usage went up 50% or more. And I call them or I say, what's going on? And I know who, you know, we look at building permits. Um, we had a lot of new pools, and I think we still see some trends in that this year. Um, last year, I think there was four or five new pools. And they're filling them with town water, with their hose. Um, so that's good for the water department, as you know. It's her money. Um, mm. So you know, I look at things can like that. Pool, can um, afford the water. Our school, the Pine Grove School, actually, um, in the past five years, is using. Um, they use seven hundred and seventy-three thousand. This year, they're at a million one. A lot of toilets are being flushed over there. They're all washing their hands. Um, but I, I think that I've yeah, actually, um, you know, so I'm, I'm starting to look at things like that. I, you know, I kind of, kind of make my own ideas when I set the rates, and that's why I think it would be great to have a little team together, look at the data that I have, um, see if we could do this a little differently, or maybe this is a good, good way of doing it. Um, it always has been geared in the 20 years to the single small users. Um, we've always shifted the rates to that first tier. Um, and that's, John, that's what I saw. Okay. Um, the other thing I might add is I, I think a lot of it too is like an instinct. I think John did it for years and he had a, a good hand on the pulse, a good you know, think his fingers were on the pulse of everything, and he could kind of instinctively tell what the rates should be to be able to cover the budget. Um, and it's a real tough thing to predict. It's like predicting the weather, because if the weather was a, if we had a very dry summer, uh, people, more people would use the water, the, the water lines, and the the, ink, the uh, consumption would go up. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's. I mean, if we had a wet uh, weather, then. He would see the thing drop down. So we talked about this last year, John. Yeah, yeah we had a wet uh, year. Plus, um, the consumption worst of it went down. Is, is the eighteen month factor? You know, people are looking for a solid number eighteen months from now. With no idea what kind of weather we're going to have, what kind of year we're going to have. It's it's tough to peg something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 
So when the rates changed the last year, uh, we went to the monthly billing. The month of July and August, I fielded many calls mm -hmm. in town. Okay, people irate over the, uh, the water bill. Um, I just you know, because I have a dog in this hunt. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I just remind everybody that the water um, we're going from one cent, basically, to two. basically to two cents. You know. So, so you know, it's yeah, it's watch it's your water consumption as you're going forward this year into the summer months. Right. Um, that's the best I can tell everybody is, you know, to keep an eye on, you know, if you got a teenage daughter or son, you know, that can be expensive. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's not funny when you get, you get hit with that bill. So I would just, you know, remind everybody to, you know, look for water conservation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions, anybody? <coughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate all the information you went over tonight. Thank you. Very Thank informative. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I are we done? No. <laughs> sorry. Well, I'm sorry on leaving. I'm like, do we adjourn? <laughs> She's stretching. She's coming. Seven to be stretch, right? Can, can we do the debt? Oh, sure. <laughs> So we're going to move to the fiscal year 14 department budgets. So the first one is the debt budget. <laughs> Try to be done by 10, and if we're not done, postpone until the next meeting. Or do we need to get through it all? Um, we do need to get just talk about the town report because I think they had a deadline of that, but that okay. would be a very quick item. But we can go through this. Okay. Well, so this will be pretty quickly. I mean, yep. pretty much the debt is what it is. Um, I don't know if you remember last year we did some refinancing, and uh, we continue to you know save money. Um, we're getting farther along, you know, into our debt schedule, so our principals are down, so our interest is down. Uh, we did um, vote at last town meeting for a capital equipment um, uh, article, which was 135,000. So you'll see the $30,000 payment in fiscal year 14. So that's really the only thing that we have added. Um, you know, we have some other things that are getting uh, our capital equipment one will be um, making its final payment in fiscal year 14, and the, um, the fire pumper truck will be paid off then as well. Um, so that program is working very well. So um, I don't, do you have any questions? I mean, like I said, the debt schedule kind of is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Is there any way of indicating, we'll say, uh, what, like the, the capping principle, uh, whether that's like over 20 years and we're in year 15 or? Uh, that I believe we have about 10 years left. It was 20 years and I believe Because like you say, you know, the fire truck is, is going to be up. Right, right. It, it, it depends on, you know, kind of the useful life of what we're borrowing for. You know, capital equipment, um, the state kind of says, okay, you know, you can borrow, the capital equipment is more of like, you know, a five-year thing. Um, mm -hmm. The library, th those are more kind of 20-year things. Um, so if you look at the landfill, um, the library, uh, Hunsley Hills, mm -hmm. I believe those were all 20-year, and then we refunded them at the 10-year mark, so we have about nine years left on those. Um, the bridge principle that um, we took a look at that and the payments and that actually was 14 years for that um, and the capital equipments are kind of a, 
they're a rolling five year. So uh, the first one we did, you know, it'll be the fifth year will be in 2014. Number two, we did the year after that. We took a year off and then we did the capital equipment number three, actually in fiscal year 2013. So, you know, that's a rolling five year right. program. Okay. Okay. Um, but, you know, most of the other things are, you know, at some point in a 20 year cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I have all the debt schedules in my office. You know, if you need, wanted to know the last year, I actually think I have it in a spreadsheet. Um, and I'd be more than happy to give you that. But, you know, off okay. the top of my head, you know, I can just kind of guesstimate from memory. Sure. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to approve the requested fiscal year 14 budget of $439,028? Okay. The motion. Okay, Janet. I'll second. Okay, Janet seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And any nays? No. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, next is the town hall wages for the janitor and expenses. And Debbie, is this? Um, so the uh, the wages are um, are being level funded. This is a bargaining unit position, okay. so no adjustments. And in a, keeping with the selectman's requirement to level funds, we've done that for the expenses as well. So these are union, that's why, is that, so those aren't changing, is Except that? It's a bargaining union position, so we, we can't make any changes to wages at this point. Oh, okay. So it's a completely, the intent is to completely level fund the fiscal 14 town hall operating expenses budget. Okay. With the level 13. Okay. Fiscal 13. Has anybody reviewed the expenses? Well, we, we track that. Um, that's So we're um, trying to just keep things on target within these sub-budget areas here. Okay. May fluctuate. Um, we're hoping everything stays on track. If not, then we'd be looking for some type of interdepartmental transfer. We call those the 33B transfers that we can do in May and June. Um, if there was a shortfall in expenses and I had enough from the wage line, I just moved over. We have that flexibility under the law. So you lost me though. This you said it was collective bargaining. Uh, the wage so line. So you're level funding the wages. Correct. So there's no increase or anything. No. But it's under collective bargaining, you see. Yes. So, so we do. we don't have a um, the contract expires at the end of the fiscal year for negotiations. So if there was a wage change for a union employee, that would have to be approved at um, uh, the town meeting, and it's not going to make it for this town meeting. Maybe the future town meeting. Okay. Would it be retroactive pay at that point, or they or depends the on the terms that come out of it. The okay. Agreement. <clears throat> Any other questions? Do we want to vote on it tonight? Yeah. <coughs> well, it's not okay. going to change, right? Right. Before it, yeah. it is what it is. So do I have a motion that we approve the fiscal year 14 request of 29697 Aye. Second. Aye. Aye. Okay, so Peter and then Larry seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Nope. So approved. Do you want to go through one more of these, just in the interest of time, yeah, and then we can go. Um, okay. So the next is um, expenses for this is for town hall, um, Debbie. Um, we just did the town hall 
So right. I had just a couple of things that were ready that were simple. Uh, the Handicap Commission, we really don't have a commission, but um, we, I am the ADA coordinator for the town if we need a handicap sign or something like that. Um, I don't know if you have that. There, there's the hydrants, the annual appropriation for that, the Agricultural Commission, and then I did the Finance Committee budget. Okay. Right. What so was this expense page t ties back? Oh, I just bring it in. It's the breakdown yes, for the right. one that we just Oh, I see right. of the expenses. Gotcha. I didn't see that at first. Yeah. That was just so you could see the detail. <laughs> okay, sorry. So moving on to the Handicap Commission. This one is level funded. I make the motion that we accept the Handicap Commission budget. I second that. Okay. Jenny. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Nope. Okay. Um, next is the hydrants. This too is level funded. I'll make a motion for 35,600 hydrants. Okay. A second? Second. Larry? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? No. Can I go back to the is there a mistake on this budget, common budget request for the request that you have F5 14, 16,318, but then the next page requested is 16,348? Um, I, I think when uh, we were trying to uh, tally this up here, yes. um, I, I can check this number. I, okay. I noticed that too. I don't, oh. um, so that, that needs to match this. Right. Oh, is and I'm not sure when we added it up, but I know that on the breakout, I'm hmm. not sure what happened on that. Yeah, because the numbers between budgeted and requested are the same. The same. And I don't, I don't right. understand. I, right. I'm sorry. We were just trying right. to get a, a couple of budgets before you tonight because there'll be a big you know, so many budgets yeah. coming in yeah. for the next couple of meetings. So if that has to no. change, we'll revote it. The, well, it's, it's correct on Form 1. Oh, okay. It's it's a level funded. It was just something in the formula on the Excel spreadsheet is showing it slightly higher on the breakout, and I don't I don't know why it's it's exactly there. Excel. Cost of living increase. But that's the number you. <laughs> this is the one that's stamped, so it's form one okay. that's stamped. Okay. The detail sheet, um, the supporting information. Okay. Um, so next is the agricultural commission. This is going up now. So they're going up. Um, the selectmen uh, recommends this budget. They reviewed it on <coughs> Monday evening. Um, there is an explanation of, from Diane Short of the commission, and it's there's a narrative to scroll back. They did do a little breakout as well. Libby Tucker came in the office and wrote out right. a couple of things. That was in the email to the song. Um they, they run two big programs for the town, the community garden and the farmer's market. And they've seen some marginal increases in operating those two programs that are a service to the community. Um, and there's a narrative here from that really is um, uh, what Diane Short had sent me. Um, and um, they need to replace some hardware on the spigots and the hoses at the community garden, which is located on the Brad Street property. And then a little plot of land there. They do have a revolving fund they established last year in, at the annual town meeting. So they're taking, you know, um, some fees and, and to offset some of the costs from mm -hmm. the individuals that are taking the plots mm -hmm. to cover some of the costs. But they do need to, I guess, replace a couple of things there. And they knew they need a new banner. I, you probably noticed on the town common backstop, the farmers market mm -hmm. banner is getting a little tattered. Yeah. But they've had a lot of success with that and uh, farmers market on Sunday mornings. Okay. So those selectmen thought that they weren't a, an increase to a thousand dollars for that. Okay. I found out with the mis the error on the thirty dollars is if you want to make a, it has to do with the the wa town water. Okay, line. so there was a care. One twenty and one and then this one's one fifty is a difference of thirty dollars okay. there. So but that's yeah, we will not exceed the, what's on Form 1, though. There must have okay. been a, a typo. Amy was uh, trying to tr bring it in, you know, type it in based on mm -hmm. what we have in our database. 
So do I have a motion to? I make the motion okay. we accept the Agricultural Commission budget. Okay, and do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, Jimmy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Last one is our budget. <laughs> so. so this is level funded in wages. Like the FinCon secretary will be placed on the same pay scale that we we spoke about. Um, but I had looked back at the history, and the secretary actually never seems to work the amount of hours. There seems to be enough in the wage line to cover any wage adjustment increase that may happen yeah. when I place that really on mm -hmm. the schedule. I haven't done the analysis, but I I just know even if you look at FY11. Um, I don't know if that's because we have to hound Linda for her hours all the time, and she's not giving us all her hours. <laughs> no, the reason is we didn't have enough meetings. You know, sometimes they're um, <laughs> no, we can fix that. <laughs> um, you may be meeting longer and, you know, more meetings. I don't know. Um, I, we can certainly hold back and I can do that. I, I still think you might not even hit that if you know, I, I sent you the job posting. So if you meet on a monthly basis throughout the whole year, um, though I, I really say probably August is the deadest month of all, mm -hmm. you will meet it. You know, if we start at the fiscal year, July, you'll have a meeting to close out the mm -hmm. fiscal year, any transfers, reorganization meeting, middle of July. Mm -hmm. You're probably not going to meet in August. Um, you'll probably meet in September if there's a fall town meeting. Mm -hmm. And then, um, depending on when that town meeting is, probably another meeting in October. Once a month till fe and, until February, March, and then into April. Mm -hmm. Could be, you know, at least two meetings in February, three plus in March and at least three in April. Then okay. kind of slows down a little. But um, you'd still meet in May, and you would still meet in June at least once, maybe twice, for transfers, those right. 33B transfers. Short, fast meetings that won't probably have a lot of minutes. But. Right. So, and then, so we're putting 50000 in the reserve fund. So if you want to even look at this and we'll hold it till next week, that's fine too. Does this need to change? Does, it probably doesn't matter. The spent line is just FY for our information because mm -hmm. we just spent some tonight. But. Yeah, um, correct. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, do people want to vote on this now? Do yeah. I have a motion to I'll approve? I'll make the motion to okay. appropriate the 51-847. Okay. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? No. Okay. Um, I just wanted to go back to one of the items that we skipped, and then we'll adjourn. Mm -hmm. Just discussing the town report, because they needed feedback as to what we wanted to put in, in that. Mm -hmm. In addition to, there's the um, graphs and the and the expense chart given the breakdown by category of expense so that'll go in but then we talked about putting a blurb of certain things that we did in the last year so I had um, sent something out I don't know if people saw it on their emails last night <laughs> Um, oh, well, I'll just read it. In 2012, the Finance Committee modified its bylaws to reduce the total number of Finance Committee representatives from 9 to 7 and to reduce the number required for quorum from 5 to 4. This change was made due to lack of volunteers. It was approved at the annual town meeting of 4-30-12. And then the other item was, in order to remain more aware of the financial issues and constraints facing the Town of Raleigh, the Finance Committee has designated liaisons to many of the town departments and boards, particularly those with significant budgets. Anything else to add or any wording changes anybody want to see on any of that? Does that sound okay? It's the only thing I was thinking of was to <laughs> explain the liaisons that, you know, the, our liaisons attend the open meetings and review the presence and projected expenses and budgets with those departments. Just to let them know what the liaisons do. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Everybody, well, you can okay with the added the verbiage? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, can I take that and I'll just add that to this? Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, don't, don't okay. read the other side. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll just, I think that sounds fine as, as you just read it. So I'll just add that to this and send it to you, Debbie. Is that, is that okay? Okay. All right. Great. So then we're done with the town report. For the minutes then, how about if we, since everybody has a copy of the minutes now, can we review them? And if anybody has any further edits, can you copy everybody and let Linda know in advance of the meet, the next meeting next mm -hmm. week? Um, but otherwise, we should be ready to approve everything next week. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. You'll be here, right, Linda? Yeah. Okay. I'll be here yeah. until someone comes. You can't even. All right. Yeah. Well, we can talk after. I just wanted should to. Should we make be able to approve like the first three of them? Um, I just want to. It's already it's ten, so let's yeah. just. But it's all right. So let's just do it next week. So, all right. Um, and then our next meeting will be next Wednesday. Yes, oh, you Wednesday. had a question about. I just wanted to, um, and I'm sorry, I'm over here. I was just trying to stamp the bill. Um, now, the schedule will be for Monday, the selectmen are going to be reviewing a lot of budgets now that they have implemented a new um, classification pay scale. Uh, so we're revising a lot of budgets uh -huh. to get them ready to go to the selectmen for Monday night. So I can start scheduling, and Karen, you can let me know what you think. You know, probably. Uh, I would guess police, fire will be ready, um, council on aging. You know, the bigger budgets traditionally come before mm -hmm. the FinCon, but if there are other budgets that you want to see that, that are, but I usually can cover and answer a lot of questions on, on some of the smaller budgets that maybe aren't under my control. Uh, but I could try to get those three in, maybe the library, um, if we can, if, it depends on if the trustees are meeting next week to, for a revised budget. Um, I don't know if we'll be ready to have the water back in. I was thinking you now the following week I'd suggested maybe a Tuesday, Wednesday night. I know it's mm -hmm. tough, but um, because we're getting close to the mm -hmm. end, um, there's a lot of work to be done, and I still have to get the warrant to the selectmen um, and then to the finance committee for review. And I'd like to just have your last couple meetings just be the Tommy and Warren, and we'll have the budget complete. Mm -hmm. That's why I was suggesting maybe we would get the water department in on a t special Tuesday meeting or something, because it seems to be a you know, focal area, a lot of questions, and we need to dedicate time. And then the um, that Wednesday, April 3rd, if I don't get the library in next Wednesday, that would be one, and then kind of clean up all the rest of the budgets. Yeah. So what do people feel Tuesday, about that? I April think. 2nd is the date you're... Proposed. I was thinking if we if the FinCon could meet Wednesday the, the 27th, oh, Tuesday, okay. April 2nd, Second. Wednesday, Wednesday, April, April 3rd. 3rd, and then the following Wednesday, um, which is April... The 10th. 10th, right? Um, definitely that night, if we had to, if we really had a lot that we hadn't been able to process or you couldn't approve or recommend or anything because you still had questions on some of the big budgets, I'd need to bring those department heads back in to meet with you. So I maybe would even need the 9th and 10th, and then by then it would be done. But I, you know, at least the first week in April, maybe two nights back to back. Mm -hmm. I think that works. Tuesday, Wednesday, does that work? For yeah, it works for me. Tuesday, the 2nd, and Wednesday, the 3rd. Okay. I know, I think Steve had conflict with Tuesdays, mm -hmm. but we, we can at least yeah. have a quorum. Just for the sake of keeping um, yep. the process moving. Sure. Okay. So um, you know, with the school number coming in last Wednesday night, we just hadn't had time mm -hmm. to really balance everything up. Right. Yeah. So we'll meet you next Wednesday, though. Next Wednesday, Correct. yeah. So I, what I'll try to do is I'll, okay. we'll have the, the police budget and, the, of course, those larger budgets, and we'll I'll get them emailed to you. As soon as I get the revision uh, in the fire budget, mm -hmm. the council on aging, um, library is another big one. But if you'd like to see health or conservation is kind of small, cleaning is kind of small, but certainly we can bring those in. Um, ZBA is really small. I, and everything's you know, level funded, though, correct? It's uh, level funded if, uh, for expenses, it is. If there is a special request to raise expenses, or increase hours that's you know separate from actually the wage adjustment, the selectmen would have to review that before it goes to the finance committee. They would want to discuss that and um, 
weigh in on it and give an opinion to the finance committee on something like that. Yeah, so I would say that any any departments where they're level funded, there's yeah. you know no need I don't think for us to have them come in. No. Yeah. I think it's anywhere there's um, budget with there's the a, yeah. mm -hmm. change that we mm -hmm. would be um, might be beneficial. Yep. Okay. Well, that All right. So we'll plan on that. Yep. That sounds good. Okay. It is ten ten. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Janet, Larry, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yay.